Okay. All right. Uh, so last session, uh, the group arrived in uh, Denmark. Uh, they were greeted with some suspicion, but they were able to find lodging with uh, Don Sibben, who is the sister of the officer who you saved. Um, and uh, the group was able to investigate several tracks within there. Um, I'm going to do a quick rundown of essentially, uh, I put the list of NPCs on the thing. I'm going to run down the locales, the areas that were kind of established. And then I'm going to ask the group to kind of fill in uh, what they got from the session, if that's okay. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, with me. Okay. Uh, so we have Denmark. Denmark is a town. Uh, it clearly used to be larger. Uh, there are some unused buildings, including what they found was a temple that had been uh, uh, essentially left to seed. Uh, it looks like uh, there's a sort of a, a smallish mountain lake uh, at the bottom, uh, and uh, that clearly is partially frozen. There are lots of hot springs and things around uh, that are, are kind of irregular, and also when the melts come, it clearly forms a, a, a larger uh, a body of fresh water there. Uh, Denmark is at the, the side of a mountain. Uh, just up the mountain uh, is a mine uh, that they didn't see miners going into. Um, they were able to find out the general location of the monastery that you wanted to investigate, and Tallfoot was able to uh, find a, uh, uh, a decent path, a path that is uh, safer and easier to get to it. Uh, got general directions to where the Yester estate is, um, they found out about the steads, the, the other smaller uh, farm houses and things out in the surrounding area that had been attacked. Two of them had been attacked, and they found evidence of animal attacks. And then the third, the most recent one, uh, it just looked like people vanished. They didn't find evidence of, uh, uh, you know, there wasn't clear signs of uh, a, a monster or something like that. Um, and... Uh, they were also uh, got the name of the f a fourth stead, the Fate Flame Estate, one of the larger estates that they haven't heard from in a couple of days. We'll come back to that. Uh, they also uh, got uh, mentioned the location of a standing stone since people had seen some weird lights at. And then finally, uh, someone mentioned in passing uh, the Tangles, which used to be an old place of retreat. Um, that was suggested that it might be a place up in the mountains that if there were bandits around that they would be uh, found at. Uh, be a good place for them to, to fall back to. Um, so that's the basics. I'll, uh, let me actually begin with Winter. Uh, and if you wanted to talk about the, the, the temple and what you, what you got. Uh, let's see. Well, the temple. How can we say this? So when Winter walked into the temple, she realized that it had been in disuse for a while. Um, based on the dust and whatnot, it looked like it was about 15 years not in use. And she thought this was a great opportunity, so she got basically convinced a lot of the other people with Shakon helping to lure them in to clean the place up. Um, and in cleaning it up, she found some old books. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think she got anything useful out of those books. Percent. There, were, there were a lot of them, so. Right, but so as she sifted through them in the in the darkness, because by the time they'd finished, it was getting dark, um, she did, didn't find anything of use from there. But they had cleaned up the temple and gotten some good uh, and improved relations with the township, um, because basically she'd shown them that there was this great place that they had available for meetings and for worship or whatnot. And uh, generally, I would say overall, uh, given the, the the service that they did the next night, uh, established strong rapport, were able to meet a couple of the other uh, uh, people in town. There is a representative here from uh, the lord who oversees the general area uh, over at Hammer Falls. His representative is here. And then also uh, the person who seems to be the ritual master for the mine, which they kind of right. don't understand. Um, and uh, uh, William uh, Talfoot, do you want to talk about the mine and what was going on with that? Um, yeah, sure. The uh, when I went to go investigate the mine, um, 
it looks like the reason they're being so secretive about it is they are mining a valuable um, magical substance, something that enhances magic um, or is used in crafting of some sort. Um, it's some kind of liquidish sort of substance. Um, I took a sample back. Winter took a look at it. Um, seems to know something about it. It's all over my head. <laughs> um, but realistically, it looks like that's the reason that they're being so secretive about it. It's it's somewhat rare, extremely valuable. Um, the mine itself has probably been mined out for a generation or so. So that seems to be the main issue there. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they're being so secretive about it, unless it's something that they're worried if people know um, that they're selling it, they'll try to take it over or something. It's a small town. doesn't seem to have much of a military presence. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all I've surmised so far. I don't know what the secrecy issue is, especially since they're selling it. Right. Uh, but that's as far as I got. Okay. Uh, uh, and Shikana, I'm going to let you kind of bat clean up with uh, what you saw as the, the major points and the people that you met. Um, let's see. Uh, we met the head woman of the town, Vanova. She's uh, been uh, attacked by something in the past and has a scarred face uh, and one uh, unusable eye. She seems quite... Um, friendly to us uh, up until the point where Winter asked about the mine, I think, at which point she clammed up, which certainly builds to most people don't talk about it very much, though it's well known. Uh, this is... She uh, told us... I think you got cut off there, Andrew. Uh, he's not allowed to divulge his secrets. No, apparently he's been, been cut off. We'll, we'll see if it's a, a mute thing. Bing. There we go. Hello. Yep. Uh, don't know how that happened. Okay. Um, sorry, we were talking to Vanova. She told us that we've... Uh, she's The town has lost about three of the surrounding households and two huntsmen have vanished over the last few months. People see lights moving around and at night... Uh, she told us about the fourth house fate flame, I think it's called, which hasn't yep. been seen in four to five days. Uh, we've gone off to see Grey Battle, the halfling tracker, and he is going to lead us house fate in the morning. Um, and uh, fate flame seems like a personable chap who was entertained to dinner by Micah Greyhelm. Mm-hmm. Uh, during the evening's entertainment after the service. Um, people were reminiscing about the mine, which changed a generation or so ago, Surpri you know, suspiciously at the same time as the um, problems where the monastery fell into disuse. We heard a story about that to do with the temple. Where the monks from the temple, use, from the monks who ran the temple were from the monastery, and one of them killed the other one, and then had to be taken down by the townsfolk, and so that's why the temple was disused from that point on. Um, and I think that's the the highlights. That's that's pretty much the highlight. Yeah. yeah. We, we met the sheriff, and we met uh, Marg the Ritualist, who was stoned off his gourd. Yes. <laughs> um, and we also discovered that people didn't recognize the Imperial Anthem here in town, which is unusual. Um, uh, and the sort of the general uh, uh, sort of uh, approach for the group now uh everybody got a full rest so you can consider yourself having a full rest and you can reset your your things um and uh the group is heading out with gray battle in the morning to go to the fate flame estate uh where uh they're going to investigate and check out what's going on with that um uh any general questions anybody 
So, uh, all right. So what? Uh, it is during the night, Shikan. Mm. As you are uh, asleep, uh, still, uh, I assume as you do composing lyrics uh, in your head uh, 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 and uh, plotting things out, um, and you will fall into uh, uh, the sleep, and you've seen a lot of snow and a lot of ice around here, and you will find yourself in this dream... um, uh, uh, s- things sort of in the snowy track that you are and there are these great shapes great sort of shadows that fall over you um, and it is cold and you realize that you are dressed thinly against the cold and uh, uh, as you do you'll hear this song sort of off-key, the Imperial Anthem kind of tuned to a minor key, done sort of dirge-like and slow, and you will hear, Do not mock me. And you will feel that there's a figure behind you, and you'll feel this skeletal hand drop on your shoulder, and you'll wake up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Does Shikan go back to sleep? Does he stay up? Uh, I probably stay awake for a little while, but would eventually fall asleep again, because that uh, reminds me of similar dreams I've had in the past, though not with the snow and ice, but mm-hmm. with the skeletal hand, certainly because of where I come from. He is, has... All, all who live there are touched in some way by his grip. Mm, yes. All right, so we're going to cut to the morning. Uh, uh, the group gathers together. Uh, you will notice when you go to the table uh, uh, that there's kind of a richer array of food and uh, uh, perhaps even some preserved fruits and things like that that have been put out um, and uh, Lady Sibin will mention kind of in passing that some of the other locals uh, uh, came by earlier and uh, gave some gifts to, to Winter and to the group, essentially uh, uh, extra food and things uh, uh, to thank you for uh, the service uh, the previous night. Um, so there's fresh bread, butter, jam, all of that provided for you so you'll be able to, to eat well. Um um, and and probably uh, uh, the Hobbit Grey Battle, having gotten word that there's more food uh, uh, over at uh, uh, Sibin's house, probably will show up early with his gear for the travel and uh, mm-hmm. push himself uh, a, a seat there. Um, and you know, gather together, get your food. Uh, Sibin will ask. Uh, uh, do you do you, uh, you and yours plan to return today? Uh, we, I believe, plan to go to uh, Fate Flame and try to be back by tonight. I think. All right, then I will. I will clear up, and I will expect uh, your return. So we 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 hope to not have to stay there overnight. I believe. All right. All right. Does Grey Battle think that we can do that? I, Grey I Battle turn. Oh yeah, yeah. So. If, if there's no problems, we should be able to, to 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 make the hike out there. If we go now, we should be able to to get out there and get back maybe a little after after lunchtime, mm-hmm. so we can still catch some lunch. Okay. You can tell that he calculates all of his uh, timing by meals. That's how he, he clocks his day. Uh, and uh, the the group will head out uh, uh, onto uh, the plains again. It's not fully arctic here, uh, but it is snow patched throughout. Uh, the, the snows come. Uh, there are clearly spaces here where uh, there's a little bit of the steam that clears some areas off, and there are some some modest roads 
uh, around here, uh, but you'll find yourself kind of going up and down throughout here. Uh, Gray Battle uh, for a Hobbit keeps a good pace uh, and uh, talks uh, throughout uh, the endeavor. Um, and in particular, once he kind of gets a sense, William, that uh, you know some of the Hobbit in-jokes, some of the halfling in-jokes, uh, you will find him sort of trading trading banter with your, your half-orc companion probably a little bit more. Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce myself, tell him I'm part of the um, Axis Tallfoots. Oh, the Tallfoots of Axis. I don't know them. But anyway, and then he'll go on with another <laughs> Hobbit story. Um, most of these involve ham uh, or mead mm, or, ham. yeah, anything like that will, will, will come out. Uh, he talks of bacon longingly um, uh, and because uh, essentially they put a lot of that back aside. They won't break into that until late winter uh, and that always disappoints him. Uh, uh, and he'll, he'll d- direct you uh, uh, as you go along through here. Uh, I'm not going to make you make survival rolls since you've got the tracker with you. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, uh, he'll, you'll, your path will take you past. He'll point out when the distance is where the standing stones are. He'll kind of point in different directions to where the different steads that were attacked were. Um, but it's kind of a straight shot through a couple of passes, uh, modest, uh, to get to uh, the Fate Flames. Uh, and... Uh, uh, he will also uh, 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 sort of t- t- tell you that the Fate Flames are actually one of the larger of the estates. So the largest family, one of the older families that, that have a lot of land around here. So they've got a more established stead. Um, and you're maybe a couple hours, a couple of three hours into uh, your journey, and uh, Grey Battle will stop, and he'll look off, in the distance, and he will say, "Off, kind of point to the say uh, left-hand path, and you'll see off off this path there are some trees, and it looks like some smaller hills and and things." And he says, "That's a lot of uh, crow vultures over there." And you see him stop, and he kind of looks, and you'll see these these largish birds. They're like double-sized crows that seem to be kind of flying up and down in a group um, and and landing. Yep. And he'll kind of... Oh, uh, that's never good. Yeah. And he'll turn to you. He'll say, uh, should we uh, see what that is, or shall we continue on and catch it on the way back? Winter chimes in. She says, "Didn't you say that the people from from this stead were hunters, and that they had gone out but not turned come back, or was that a different group?" Oh, it was a different group. The the two huntsmen brothers. They went missing a a couple of weeks ago, but uh, uh, they sometimes get their drunk on and travel further. <laughs> of course. Well, seeing how this seems to have come across our path it would seem to be fortuitous that we might want to go see what this is it might provide us information about what's been going on in the area all right all right uh and he'll look around clearly making sure that everyone else is is going to walk in front of him if you guys go do this Mm -hmm. uh so who kind of takes point when you go to approach this new an unusual thing I guess I will. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 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 mm-hmm. Irondelle, um, let me have you make a kind of a sort of outdoor awareness, combat awareness, and a kind of soldiering role right, with use, uh, wisdom. I'll use my Hellho Commando and for the Order of the Mana Corps. Okay. So. Not so great. Okay. Uh, a lot of crows around. Uh, looks like there's some s- smallish hills here. Uh, uh, as you uh, as you get down in, uh, 
you can see that this the snow is disturbed there are tracks around uh though they've been they may be a a, a couple of days old uh and uh, uh you will see that actually one of these smallish hills uh it looks like uh Part of it has collapsed in or something. There's a lot of tracks around that. Uh, and that's sort of where the crows are, are kind of coming and congregating. So they're going into the collapsed hill? Yes. All right, there must be a lot of carrion or something in there. Uh, and Winter, Thorn, I'll have you make a, a roll now. Okay, and what do you... Uh, so, uh, 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 let's have you make wisdom plus to, uh, uh, any kind of uh, ritual training or divine training. Um, we're thinking fortune teller, I guess? Sure, let's go with that. That's, uh, either that or citadel archivist. I'm going to have to add a background that talks to, uh, to religion more. Okay. Um, you look around and you'll see a couple of those sort of knocked over in different places some of those wooden totems that you saw at the village the same sort of carving style and you will realize that these are uh, barrow mounds uh that these are a set of old burial mounds oh. ah. well that's interesting why would crows be at a bur burial mound there shouldn't be anything worth eating here anymore She's uh, got shit. Mm, well, she's, I have something to say. <laughs> I, hang on. <laughs> I'm suspicious of the uh, the old king, old old one hand, having something to do here, because we get that sort of thing a lot where I come from. <laughs> And I had a dream about him last night. So there you go. That's what I'm suspicious of. I think the Lich King is involved here. And when you say that, uh, you will see uh, a gray battle kind of, you'll hear that when you say that. Uh, um, and uh, he, he gets a little more nervous and uh, uh, kind of steps back away. Uh, and he'll say, uh, yeah, I guess uh, there there are these kinds of places all around. I I it's it's local lore, uh, so I don't know much about it. But yeah, so so you think there are uh, ghosts and uh, uh, skellies in there? Skeletons? Could be. Maybe a wraith. I hear wraiths are bad. Uh, most things that serve uh, one hand are the bad. Are bad? Yes from my experience. The problem we have here is because a lot of the rights have been neglected for so long, that's where that's where you get stuff coming in. You have to keep the rights going or, or one hand gets gets in, you see. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know that. All right, well, I'll have to keep that just, in mind from now on. Um, nod, well, don't nod sagely and, and it's like, uh, yes, yeah. this is oh, that's bad, what, okay. bad. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Winter, uh, Arendelle, Tallfoot, Shakan, what do you, what the four of you wish to do? Who wants to do something now? Let's start with, uh, uh, Arendelle first because she was sort of on point. Um, I'm not particularly intimidated by the thought that the, the Lich King might be involved, so I'm, I'm going to want to move forward and investigate, so I said, let's... Let's go take a closer look at this. Whatever it is, we, we, we should know what is causing this disruption. Okay. It could be trouble for the town. All right. Uh, so you'll step forward and take a look. It looks like there were, uh, that this was kind of overgrown with soil. Someone has, uh, they've clearly clawed away the, the soil and grass that covered uh, uh, the, the, the doorway. Um, it and looks like someone dug it up from the outside. Yes. And prized the door slab free, and there's no that's not steps, but there's kind of a a slope going down into this barrow here um and 
you'll probably get a little bit of you'll get that dry smell of old tomb but also a more recent rot smell and probably you'll see a couple of these crow vultures will kind of fly past you as you d disturb them and they're going in and out of the, the barrow itself. yeah they're kind of kind of staying around and they seem to be kind of taking turns going Do any of them have any carrion that they're holding or eating yeah, they probably see a, a little bit of a strip of something in at least one of their beaks. Whatever it is must must be f fresher than what was originally in this barrow. Yes. Uh, William, what about you? Um, well, I'm going to keep going. I'm, I'm on the assumption that since I know nothing about the Lich King personally and I'm completely stupidly unafraid, um, that it's most likely that somebody was trying to hide out in here and or protect themselves from whatever we've been hearing about is in this area here. So I'm just going to go in, light a torch, okay. and I'm assuming we're going to find dead recent bodies. So you, you'll kind of step forward, light a torch. Uh, uh, you can see it goes down a ways, um, and you'll definitely see that it looks like there are... Uh, uh, there's, there's at least some sort of body on on the floor there down inside um uh, so i assume so we'll say william and arendell proceed down in uh what about you winter um winter will take a look around the surroundings one last time before going in just to make sure that there's not something outside uh, do, lurking to try and come at us from behind okay uh a quick kind of check around it does look like whatever happened here happened mm, a couple of days ago um, and the other thing you'll notice is that this appears to be the only one of these mounds that was disturbed uh, um, so you'll be able to check that and then you follow down Shikan uh, I'm uh, just following Irondel down because I'm used to the Lich King things being an enemy of the Lich King and myself uh, and I've, we are seem to be okay at this point. So, let's go have a let's go investigate and make sure nothing un, untoward is happening. All right. So you will move down into this barrow. Uh, uh, it's it's old and not particularly well made. You can see spots where parts of the ceiling have collapsed. Uh, you can see that there's sort of simple wooden slabs that would have served as the beer for uh, uh, whoever was buried here. Um, and the, the, it looks like there were two bodies in here. They are gone, but there is definitely tied up with the, the hands behind their back and gagged. You can see it looks like uh, someone has essentially uh, been uh, sacrificed in here. Looks like a couple of days ago. Uh, Arendelle? So this is a human sacrifice. Yes. I'm stepping forward to take a closer look at the victim to see if, I, if it's possibly a villager or anybody we might recognize as a local. Okay. Uh, why don't you make a... Well, I'm not going to have you make a wisdom check. That seems silly. Uh, so you'll take a look at it. It definitely looks uh, like uh, a, a villager. Um... Uh, you know, has this sort of a local outfit. Doesn't look like anybody foreign to these parts. Um, it looks like they were uh, stabbed in the heart uh, a couple of days ago. Um, uh, but actually, I will have you make a wisdom check for one thing. Um, do you have any kind of investigation or uh, uh, for? I mean, I hate to say forensics, but anything that would apply not, here. Not, not really. So okay. I'd probably just straight wisdom. Straight wisdom. <laughs> that's uh, uh, so that's what you'll pick up and the body has been pecked at by the, the, the crows that's probably the, the biggest thing here I ask uh, this, the tracker uh, do you recognize this person? so you, you'll kind of look to, to, to the tracker and he is, he is well up at the entrance to the barrow um, he'll kind of Grey Battle will come down poke and go oh yep 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 uh, uh, yeah that's uh, one of the farmers uh, from that, that last estate that got attacked. The one where they went missing. 
That's one of them. How many were missing? Uh, I believe it was just, uh, what, three of them? Three of them. Uh, with uh, two, two brothers and uh, one of their cousins. Mm -hmm. And he'll he'll move back up out of out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else want to do anything here in the tomb? I um, I wonder if there's a way we can uh, close off the barrow or put it right so it's undisturbed in some way uh, or. So that we can uh, have the get uh, so that the Lich King doesn't take over in here because the barrow is disturbed and there's a corpse. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, 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 you know that uh, uh, Irondel or Winter could do the simple rites for that, and then you would want to to put the uh, uh, door back on. Mm -hmm. I think we should do that at least. Okay. Uh, William, Winter, either of you doing anything in here? Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, take a general look around, I guess, looking for clues, per se. Okay. Um, what do you think is your appropriate uh, 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 Scooby-Doo uh, skill? <laughs> I don't really have one. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I could use uh, organized crime. I mean, if it's a oh, crime yeah. scene. Oh, that seemed actually good. Uh, let me have you make a roll uh, uh, with wisdom. I'll oh, see. Now that's a good roll. <laughs> um, uh, well, one of the things is you, you kind of look at the body and very clearly uh, this person has been held for a while. Um, you can see the, 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 the burns of rope uh, on him and, uh, you can see that 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 he was clearly carried here, um, uh, and uh, so that will, will will strike you that 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 last stead, those people must have been kidnapped rather than than violently attacked. Um, but the other thing is, as you're kind of looking around, do you have enough sort of track sense with that twenty five to realize that the two bodies that were in here certainly walked out under their own power? Okay. Does that seem like good? Yeah. Uh, the other the other question I had, and I'll, I'll not knowing much about the religion or anything. Is sure. Should we actually take the body out and back to its family or the town or whatever? I mean, is this something we just leave here? Uh, Winter, what what is the deal with that? Um, it depends on the local rights. It what are, what are the local gone. rights? Tell me. <laughs> I'm not from here. <laughs> no, you're going to tell me what they are. I know, okay. Um, I know. I know. I, I got where he was going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess the first thing is, so can you describe this one to me? What does the, the barrel mound inside look like? And was it, what was disturbed? Oh, okay. Uh, so let me have you make a, a, a wisdom roll. Um, uh, you've got uh, the uh, the dwarven. Don't you have the background with the the treasure hunting? I've got the treasure hunting, and I've got the citadel archivist. Okay. So either of those might work. I okay. Think. Which uh, one do you want? Uh, let's do the the, the archivist here, because uh, uh, I've got a reason for that. Okay, and I'll use int intelligence. Uh, intelligence or wisdom, either one would be fine. Oops, wisdom would have been better, but oh well. Oh look, a twenty four. All right, so uh, clearly the mound. Uh, is a little more formal. Uh, I mean, it's that, that there was a mound indicates uh, significant uh, 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 presence here. Um, you will note some of the, 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 the sort of paintings and carvings in the side you recognize as being local but older. Um, you will definitely see throughout there is a motif of wolves and of the wolf throughout uh, on the things. Um and you will also see a mark that you recognize as a symbol for that Scofflaw family, the Orndarks. And so you suspect that whoever was here were some kind of 
chiefs or chieftains of the Orndarks at some point, or or great warriors. Now this this person isn't from the Orndarks. So no, right. and this this person who's dead is clearly just a a, a local local uh, farmer. So they don't belong here, effectively, in this barrow. Correct. Right. Uh, so so does that answer your question, Winner? Yes. Okay. So so she'll she'll say. We need to take him out, take this body out of here, um, and try and restore the barrow to the way it was as much as we can. And um, I'll perform a ritual of cleansing uh, as, as quickly as I can, because the last thing we want is some some more issues coming here from the fact that this was disturbed. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Very much so. So it'll probably take maybe about uh, a half an hour for the group of you to uh, get the body out uh, wrapped in whatever uh, uh, extra cloth or clothing or, or cloaks that you have uh, and uh, uh, to, to place it and probably bury it under the snow for the time being so you don't have to, to transport it and so the animals won't get to it. Um, and uh, Winter Arendelle, you're able to perform the rites on this and then uh, haul this stone slab back into place where it kind of goes with it with a serious thunk when it locks back in. And uh, Grey Battle is looking certainly more anxious than he was before, kind of rubbing his hands together nervously. And he will say, uh, do we want to press on or do we want to go back? Press on. Huh. Oh, Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and you see him look at the sun and, and calculate and uh, kind of doubles his pace uh, a, a little bit, at least in this, this starting part, as you're heading on towards uh, uh, the Fate Flame Estate. Mm -hmm. um, and he probably distracts himself with local color. Um, uh, over there is uh, where sometimes the steam vents are good and sometimes we're able to get uh, 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 wild berry bushes um, when... Uh, 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 when the, the spring comes and uh, over there is where a little bit of a we get a runoff uh, sometimes from the lake um, and uh, he'll say and actually if you this is sort of a nice straight shot out here to uh, the fate flames and if you go going past there's another one of the old uh, estates that that used to be around and uh, this this area around here is a more fertile area and uh, it's uh, it's 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 uh, decent are we anywhere heading in the same direction as that um other estate we're supposed to make the side trip to? The Yester estate? Yeah. Uh, uh, you ask him, he'll go, oh yeah, uh, Yester estate, if you keep going past Fate Flame, uh, uh, another couple of hours, uh, uh, you'd hit the, the Yester estate. Uh, I've never been there because it's supposed to be a kind of a haunted canyon. Mm -hmm. All right. And... Uh, the group will, will kind of come over a rise and you'll see that the, the fields kind of open up. Uh, you can see that there's a, uh, a stream, uh, of decent size. You guess it's, it's, it's frozen over now, but it must be one of those streams that run here that when they get the, 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 the melt in, uh, the spring and summer, this must be a nice, uh, sp uh spring. Um, and, uh, you will, uh, see that there is, uh, a, how do you, how do I want to put this, um, uh, a set of buildings, uh, a nice side farmhouse stead. Uh, you can see that there's actually, they've got a small mill with a wheel on it. Uh, they've got, uh, some nice paths. It looks like pens for animals. Um, and uh, uh, sort of a general uh, good-looking large size. It looks like there's a, a, a maybe w once was a watchtower here that, that collapsed some time ago. Um, so why don't I have one person you can nominate uh, kind of do the uh, combat sort of perception check for what you see uh, here. Uh, and that'll be a, a wisdom-based check. Who wants to be the uh, sacrificial goat on this? 
Uh, I can go scout if you want me to. I don't really care. Do you want to move up on uh, closer to take a look? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. I'm, I'm okay. So you move on closer. Um, in that case, I'm going to need you to make a stealth check. <laughs> oh yeah you are you are are silent much like when you were going up the the mountainside uh you are quiet uh silent um and uh i'm going to show you a map now if i may okay i'm going to pull that up uh oh there it is And uh, I'm going to drop a couple of things on this map here. So imagine, Dusty, uh, that you are kind of coming from this angle over here where I'm hitting the red dot. Can you right. see that? Okay. Uh, and you will see that. Uh, in the town, I mean, it's not really a town, it's just a big stead, uh, that there is a very large wolf kind of pacing that area there. Um, and you'll catch sight of this wolf figure walking on two legs, moving around. Uh, it looks horrible. Uh, it's, it's about seven feet tall. It's it's a it's a wolf thing, but it's matted and rotted, and and awful, uh, and it's kind of walking sort of awkwardly around like it's patrolling, um, and that's that's the two things that you will see there. Okay. Oh, and you also see it looks like there is someone tied up by the well over here. All right. Um, well, I think it, the wolf I wasn't scared of. The whatever it is, my natural instinct is to go, whoa. And I will back the hell up. Okay. So with and, a 25 on your stealth, you're able to easily withdraw without being spotted and get back to the, to the group. Yeah, and I'll tell them what I saw. Kind of a little bit freaked out. So, what would you all like to do? Uh, which stead is this? Is this the Orndark stead? No, this is actually Fate Flame. Fate Flame. Okay. Largest, largest family. Uh, one of the, the, the wealthier steaders has not been heard from in a few days. Huh? And imagine that this uh, river here, this stream, is frozen over completely. Whatever it is you saw, it needs to be driven out. We need to rescue that prisoner. Oh, and, and I agree. I'm just... I don't know what that thing was. <laughs> so there's a regular but large wolf, you say, and a wolf thing roaming around on two legs that looks vaguely undeadish, or at least I guess matted and rotted, you said. Yeah, I mean, I I would guess that uh, if werewolves are real, <laughs> which they are, one of them, which they are, <laughs> I have never met one, and wasn't looking forward to it. All right. So, given that situation, how would the group like to proceed? Um, and imagine that your fighter is with you, and so he'll he'll go along with. If you guys want to go in as a group, or if you want to split up, however you want to approach this. When when I saw the guy attached to the well, was the wolf and the large thing um, were they patrolling like right next to the well? I mean, did I did it look like they were look, patrolling over the whole stead? Uh, it looked like that. This the the wolf is kind of standing here, kind of moving back and forth. And the, the, the where thing seems to be kind of circling the big house. It goes past the, the guy who's tied at the well, who looks just absolutely terrified. 
I guess my point is, is it looked like the werewolves leaving him alone far enough where there would be any option of me going in and cutting him loose and getting him out. Uh, it, if you waited and were able to sneak in uh, and get up when the werewolf's on the far side, you might be able to cut him free, uh, 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 especially if his attention was elsewhere. Do you guys want to take a risk and try something like that, or are we looking at a frontal assault? Well, Arundel, we... is all for the frontal assault. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I am uh, happy to go along with whatever everyone else is planning, being the uh, person who doesn't like undead things, definitely not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Um, and so if that's an undead creature, I'd l- like to have it destroyed as quickly as possible. Um, and if that involves being in combat with things, that's all right. I'm fine with that. And, but if, if William thinks that some stealth on his part would be helpful, I'm happy for him to do that. Question. Answer. Um, well, A, these wolves, the, the Barrow Mound that was, uh, consec- was desecrated. Yes. It was uh, filled with wolf symbolism. Yes, so it here was. we find wolves at the nearest stead that that have taken a hostage. But uh, that said, so there, there's a connection there, which mm. I can see. But I would not expect them to take hostages. That doesn't strike me as normal. So I, there's more information. There, there's something unless, we're missing here. Unless they seek more sacrificial victims. Well, did did we didn't you say, Lowell, that the the houses had lots of conflicts between them and that this hillbilly house <laughs> of you know these guys scoff laws scoff laws yes uh, yeah they were particularly described as an old uh, barbaric family that had been around that had fallen on hard times and were were kind of the uh the problem family around in the area yes and maybe they're pulling something especially if they're sacrificing at their own tomb Maybe they pulled one of their ancestors out and said, hey, go kill stuff. I have another idea for a plan of attack. Okay. Perhaps we can go weaken or find a weak area of the ice on the river and lure that creature onto the ice and possibly plummet it down underneath. That's interesting. Well, I like the way you're thinking because we, if we distract them to go away from the captive, then Tallfoot could sneak in and maybe Shakon and, and and rescue the captive. And we're also assuming that these are the only two creatures. There could be something else that we haven't seen yet, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. If we use well, we know that two things walked out of that barrow. If one of them is that wolf thing, there, there may be another one around. And my point being, but if we set up a distraction, yes. we might draw more of them out and mm-hmm. draw them away from the captive, and then we can then we can try and get the captive. Yes. Uh, I would like to go check the, the river, go around wide, and see how weak the ice is. Okay. Uh, uh, so we'll we'll do that, and then we'll talk about uh, we'll kind of talk about where the split would be. Uh, why don't you go ahead? What is what do you think is an appropriate skill for you, kind of scouting the the territory? Uh, again, it would probably be. Uh, check or wisdom which one uh, wisdom I think for this okay uh, so you will actually see that and I'll, I'll let's let's go ahead and mark that on the map let me get a appropriate thing so over here closest to the mill on the, that side it looks like that ice just below the rock is actually thinner than some of the others. Like uh, maybe there's a crack of that steam vent or something that that uh, weakens that, and it certainly looks thinner than the other parts. So I think under a decent amount of weight, it would probably give. It it might. All right. 
perfect. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually test the ice by putting a little bit of my weight so on you it. Wanna, so so now let me ask you this now. Now you want to kind of stealth down to the ice now and test it? Yes. yes All right. See how so is. let's start with your stealth check. What kind of armor are you in? <laughs> What's that? I, I'm in I'm in plate. Okay. Yes. It, might, it might be better if I do that and you don't get on the ice in your heavy armor. Just a thought. <laughs> I wasn't planning to climb all the way onto the ice, but yes, perhaps it would be best if you you, you went down and checked. Okay. Okay. Shikan, do you want to uh, make the, the stealth check? I will certainly try. I um, am going to call on my unique thing of being the water dancer. Oh, okay. Uh, which has, in fact, not been detailed, but which I'm now going to say is that as long as I'm dancing, I can walk on water. <laughs> All right. So, so this will help you if it if it cracks so, or if you fall through. Singing quietly to myself, okay. just getting the rhythm right. I actually shimmy onto the ice to check how strong it is. Okay. <laughs> so let's have you make your stealth check. I I don't have a jukebox to play the tune in the background, but you can just imagine that there's like a steel band playing in the background. <laughs> How's that sound? That sounds great. <laughs> ha, ha, have, has the group seen you do this before? No, no. This, I just made it up just then. Oh, okay. My so, so. And I am going to make a dex check against using my War Monarch. Sounds good. Dex. Rolled a nine, though. Rolled so. a nine. <laughs> so. Uh, Not a good stealth check, so I think I'm making a bit too much noise to get the dancing right. Okay. Uh, I will say that with your uh, uh, with your roll that you didn't fumble, um, but you do uh, get out to the ice. You're dancing. You'll hear it give a crack that is clearly mm -hmm. soft enough to go. Uh, but you will also see uh, that sort of sleeping behind this here is a really big wolf. Ah, and it will shoot its its uh, muzzle up and it will see you mm -hmm. um and uh so i'm going to assume that the rest of the group is is out and about may i may i place people on the table if you guys don't yep. mind sure. okay so we'll put i'm going to suggest that everyone was sort of hiding behind these rocks here maybe and i'm on the river that seems reasonable and williams somewhere well, no, I was back with you guys because I just told you about it. So we hadn't decided what to do. So. Yeah. So we'll assume that that the uh, decision, and uh, we'll assume that Gray Battle, because he doesn't want to be left alone, is up here as well. Uh, yep. So let us have everybody actually roll initiative. Okie dokie. Okay. So let me do the. Do, do, where's my initiative clock? Is that. Let me clear that out. Uh, yes? I, w I was going to say, part of what I was hoping we were doing was that we were going to be setting up a distraction, and so I um, was actually ho hoping uh, to be over here in case there was a distraction so we could get to the captive. All right. Uh, do you want William with you at that point? If I hadn't thought we'd split up yet. Well, it's up to you. Uh, uh, I'll let you guys, since you guys were... Yeah, we, kind of... we, can, we can have been waiting for them on the other side and then okay. have... In so, which case, I'd be over with him. All right, so we'll put you two down there. That seems reasonable to me. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the distraction because I'm really good at distracting people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do it so well. Mm. Okay. So, and i got my numbers here. And uh, that is... That is, and that is, and uh, Tallfoot, what was your initiative? I got a 15. I didn't take, though. I don't know why. Okay, you always have to hit enter after you do it. I always oh. forget that. Oh, and I don't need to put Greyhelm in. Okay. Uh, so, let me descend in. All right. So, we actually start out this round. Uh, of the, 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 the adversaries right now, only this large, large wolf is sort of aware of uh, your presence. So, Shikan, 
what would you like to do? I am going to get off the river and up onto the rocks behind me as quickly as possible and then start the distraction that we just mentioned by playing All right. my instrument and possibly doing uh, some spells to buff my companions. I am going to have you make a dexterity check for moving up, uh, getting up onto these, these icy rocks here for your mm. move action. Ready, set, go. Yes. I'm 19. That's a little nicer. Yes. Perfect. You can move yourself up onto the, the rocks. So I'm up on top of that rock there. Okay. And I am going to see. Aha. Okay. I'm going to ask you a meta question. Absolutely. Does that dire wolf have more than 40 hit points? Uh, that dire wolf has more than 40 hit points. Okay, that's not going to work then. This is where the wear is at this point. Yep. That's not going to work either. Okay. What are you thinking? I am going to start playing to distract the wolves and attract their attention, and I'm going to play the Song of Heroes. Okay. And the effect of that is? Uh, me and all of my nearby allies get plus one attack bonus. Okay. Uh, Grey Helm and Grey Battle and uh, Irindel, I believe, are nearby at this point. Does that seem reasonable? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so you get up there, call it the, the wolf looks. Uh, the werewolf will hear playing and will become aware. Winter on 17, what do you want to do? Um, I want to use the domain knowledge invocation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, which, as I understand, it's an invocation. Does that count? As an action, then. Uh, is I that the one which allows you to do the, the 20 for the knowledge? Or is that something uh, else? Um, that's, yes, I can do that also. But what this is, is it's at the beginning. Of, I have to do it in the first round of battle. And it gets me a glimpse of the battle's future. Roll a die six as a free action at any point after the escalation die roll equals the number. I can give somebody a boon of plus two um, to re-roll a single attack. My invocation is a quick action. Yeah, it's a quick action for that. Okay. So that you're saying I can do that and something else? Absolutely. You can do a quick action, a standard action, and a move action. Okay. So... Ooh, that was good. Okay. So starting at the second one, that means uh, when the escalation die is at two, that that's when I can start using that. Excellent. Um, so my plan would be then to move quietly. I'm going to move as subtly as I can. Okay. Hoping that Valis is with me to move around this way. Okay. All right. Uh, that since you're kind of going a roundabout way, it's going to be a not particularly difficult stealth check. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll uh, your dexterity check for that? Um. Okay. And I get to use a reformed thief. That sounds good. Nice. That sounds like the most appropriate one. <laughs> okay. So you will get over to that corner. Um, you can see that some of these doors are open on some of these buildings. Um, and clearly there's a lot of tracks around, so you suspect that there are other things around and about. Um, the building that you're immediately at here doesn't appear to be anything in that one. Um, so that's your move action. Do you want to do anything for your standard action? Um, if I can see around the corner, can I see the captive and what he, what sort of how healthy the person looks uh, conscious unconscious uh well let's let's do that as a uh so he looks kind of bad off uh, uh you can see that uh, his clothing is disheveled uh his jerkin is is torn uh he's uh, bruises on his face uh he is kind of uh, awake he's clearly been outside in the cold for a while 
Um, and you can see that around the well uh, in, in the mud. Uh, uh, someone has clearly uh, drawn some magic sigils uh, around. Um, and judging by uh, the redness of the, the, the muddy puddles there, you guess that maybe uh, there's already been a sacrifice or two there. Um, but yeah, he looks like he's he's he could probably move on his own, but not fast. Sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Okay, Tallfoot, William, what do you want to do? Um, I'm just going to head up next to Winter. Okay, and take a peek around also, and I'm looking for the opportunity. Um, the idea is to run out, grab him, and bring him back. This looks like this building has a little shed, someplace we could prop him up. Okay. Uh, let's wow. have you make your stealth check, because you could always roll a one. Oh, thanks for cursing me there. I know. That's my job. <laughs> but or not. No. I could roll a 20 instead. Wow. Uh, so you are quiet, um, and uh, you will see... Uh, so uh, when you go out there on the next round to go and grab him, I'm going to carry over a plus two bonus to your stealth check. Does that seem reasonable? Hey, it sounds good to me. Um, and you will see, kind of glancing about uh, that, let me, uh, you'll see in this doorway over here is a sleeping wolf. Um, and let's see what else you can see from your position. Um and you'll probably also see uh, uh, another one of these wares sort of uh, digging around here, kind of up in the tower, kind of just uh, staggering with kind of a little, like purposeless uh, digging and that kind of thing. Yeesh, there's a lot of guys here. All right. Uh, the wolves are surprised. The dire wolf. So the dire wolf is going to attempt to get to Shikan. Um, so let's see here. He is going to rush across. So you've done this. Uh, I'm going to make a, a, a movement check for him. Let's say that it's a 50-50 chance that he will go through the ice. How does that sound? And be stuck. Seems, seems fair to me. Okay, so uh, uh, since uh, you danced out on the ice, Shikan, even or odd that he falls through. I'll just make a save. If he rolls too low, he, he falls through, and if he rolls too high, he succeeds. Okay, Simple. we'll do that. All right. I was going to let you pick, but fair enough. That would be. <laughs> see, I always I like to go, put this destruction in your hands. There's no such thing as checks for NPCs. You just roll saves of different difficulty level and get on with the job. All right. So he will move up and uh, scrambles up uh, onto the rock. I will say uh, given the uh, ice and given the scramble up that he needs to do, he will not get an attack on this round. Good. Irindel, uh, right. you hear a scream of the halfling behind you as this massive, massive wolf leaps up onto the rock. Alright. It's a free action to activate Halo. Okay. And uh, that ups my, my defenses by two until I get hit. And then as a full action, I'm going to cast uh, Hammer of Faith. And okay. I'm going to step up close to the wolf and attempt to draw its attention. Okay. Uh, so you'll get the, the Hammer of Faith up, glowing. Certainly, uh, uh, you are casting more light, uh, drawing more attention there. Um and uh, now, starting on the next round, you have two NPCs. So let me tell you, uh, uh, you can, if you wish, uh, Shikan Irindel, since Grey Battle is by you, uh, if you wish, you can use him to grant you a plus two, but when you do that, you kind of put him in danger. You can do that after you roll. Uh, Grey Helm, we're going to roll the uh, uh, a d6, uh, and we'll see what occurs. So uh, I'm going to grab my... Where's my one here? Escalation die goes to a one. Uh, and Shikan, you were the start of the round, so I'm going to have you roll that d6 for Greyhelm. Sure. 
Oh, look at that. Straight off the bat. Okay, so uh, let's see really quick. Uh, so can somebody roll for me? Uh, 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 2D, let's say 2D8 plus 5. Winter? Would you roll those for me? For me? Okay, so Greyhelm steps up and cuts into uh, the dire wolf. Uh, uh, so kind of puts himself forward and, and not a position where he can get attacked back and takes that slice there. Uh, Shikan. Okay. Uh, I am going to uh, keep singing, okay. see if my song is sustained. No, it's not. Unfortunately. Oh. But that's all right. It's... Um, No one used it the first part. However, the final verse um, will be for Irondel, who gets plus two to their next attack roll in this battle. Awesome. And my song ceases for the moment. And I um, instead use uh, my... Melee attack. All right. Because I'm quite close to the monster. All right. So I'm just going to swing at it with my scimitar. Need to hit an 18. Which I got. Excellent. 16 points of damage. Uh, let's see what kind of flexible melee attack I get out of that. I rolled a 13. Nothing really applies other than pull it together. Okay. okay. But nobody really needs a recovery at this point, so life is tough. All right. Uh, so let's do that. So this wear is going to come around that way. Okay. And that wear is going to come around over to here. Okay. So the two wares move. Uh, they're not particularly fast, but you'll see one of these undead werewolves kind of come over there. Uh, and kind of cut through the, the forest and is looking across. And Dusty, you'll see the other one come out of the tower and uh, move past and kind of come around the building. Winter on 17. Okay, so uh, this one is still not moving, is it? It hasn't woken up yet, no. Oh, it's asleep? Yeah, kind of napping. Okay. Um... Oh, that's prime target then, isn't it? Uh, um, okay, I'm going to move this way. Okay. I don't know if you want me to make a stealth check. Uh, yes, but very easy. Okay. And my goal behind this is that I'm separating myself from Tallfoot because I'm planning on attacking that wolf and distracting it. Okay. Do you want to move and take the attack on this round, or do you want to hold on that? Um, I think I probably want to hold. Okay. Do you want to delay until after he goes? Yes. Okay, so that'll reset your initiative, but that's that's uh, fine on that. Simple dexterity check with your reformed thief. Oh, yeah. You are fine. Uh, so you place yourself in that position. We'll assume now that you and Talfa kind of go on the same initiative. It doesn't really matter given the, the way that things run with the numbers. And I'm going to cut to Tallfoot. Have you resolve your action, and then we'll come back to Winner. Tallfoot. All right. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Can I move out, grab him, and move back? If you, if you roll well enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> well, that is the overall plan. Yes. It could be done. It could be done. You've got a plus two on this round from your crit last round. All right. Well, just want me to roll another stealth check then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at plus you. Two. All right. So 
he will rush up, grab. It's a quick sort of combat action to cut him free and drag him back into here. Does that seem reasonable? Yep, that's where I wanted to go. Okay, Winter. Um, okay, then I'm going to do the... Uh, use my Javelin of... Wait, not Javelin of Faith. Is that what it is? Is that the one I can use all the time? I think that... Uh, no, that's not your at will. I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, isn't Javelin of Faith an at will? Let me see. I think so. Might be. That's... I, I, at least I have it documented that way, but I could I, be wrong. Then it, then it might be. Well, regardless, I'll use it now. Okay. So I can look it up after after sure. my turn. Um, okay, so then it's... Uh, oh, it is your at will, yes. So, but I don't know what happens if I click this. So how would I, how should I roll it? Uh, uh, so uh, your attack roll with the, the Javelin of Faith, I believe, is your wisdom stat. Wisdom plus level. Mm -hmm. The wisdom, okay. So and it'll it's... be a d20 plus the wisdom modifier plus level. Yep. Okay. And uh, you need to hit with the PD here. And you're going to need to hit a 15. I'll say he's asleep, so you need to hit a 13. Okay, my wisdom is a plus 3. So. Woo! Oh my gosh! Uh, so that's double damage. Which is, since that was the spell I had upped for. Uh, for my incremental, that's going to be six dice six. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll that so, damage. Uh, okay. Do you want to roll six dice, or do you want to just roll and double it? Um, well, there's just the wisdom modifier, which I think only gets once. Or how does that work? No, it doubles all of it. All of it. Okay. I'll just do six dice six. Okay. It's always more fun to roll lots of dice, <laughs> especially when I'm rolling. <laughs> so fifty-six. Uh, so 28 points of damage to this thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you that this thing has 28 hit points. And I'm actually looking at the sheet going, what? Uh, so you will kill this wolf with that javelin. That's at will? That's at, well, he, that's, he upped that to his third level with the incremental advance. Ah, oh, okay. So and uh, critical hit. Yes, and a critical. So that was, that was pretty sweet. Uh, so William has, has got the, the, the figure back. Um, the wolf, uh, let's, let's do d20, d20. Okay, so we've got one more wolf on the table. So he's going to, so here's the yelp. This one will come running this way. And the last wolf on the table will move out of the building, come, come out here. They don't get to anybody, but they, they, they run over this way. All right. The dire wolf is going to take a swing at Irondel. Irondel, what is your AC? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Lord. Okay. Let's see if I can hit. That is a no. Uh, so essentially, it uh, uh, raises up one gigantic paw uh, and goes to to swipe down at you from atop this, and uh, it will bounce off your armor. Um, doesn't do any miss damage. Uh, but does does uh, kind of cut across, um, and then you get to respond in kind. Right. First, as a quick action, I'm going to invoke my invocation of vengeance. Uh, basically, for the rest of the battle, everybody nearby to me gets uh, double their level extra miss damage. Oh, nice. Attacks. And then I'm going to attack a smite using the hammer of faith. All right. All let's right. let's see it. Uh, so yeah, AC plus... 18. Plus two attack roll, but don't forget. Is yeah. It, do I still have plus one as well, or just plus two total from you? Plus two f just for you, but nobody else is getting plus ones now. Okay, so, so one for the exhalation two. die. So. Ooh. All right, so... Yeah, 23 points of damage. 23. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, this... A uh, beast staggers back from that shot as you smash into it. There is that sort of uh, horrible. What 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 is the the sound it makes when the hammer hits? It's like a, it's actually a it's a long sword, but there's actual like small uh, thunderous uh, boom when it connects with it. All right, crackle crackle goes across. It hits, uh, impacts into the thing, and it staggers back. Um, uh, and now it ha only has eyes for you. 
<laughs> As intended. Okay. We go to the Escalation Die 2. Shikan, you're going to start out the round for us. Yep. Uh, uh, well, I'm in LA, so I'm just going to use my scimitar once again and see what battle cry I get. Okay. Uh, AC 18. Yep. Uh, and I didn't hit it that time. Um, and you get bonus miss damage, right? Y- yeah, I think I get an extra four, so that's six points of miss damage. Okay. Uh, can I use my the invocation, or is he too far away? Can I have hinted to him what might happen and that he needs to be prepared for a certain thing so that he gets to use his reroll plus two? Yeah, you could do that. I mean, it's legal, certainly. Okay, then let's let's do that. All right, I'll roll again. Okay. And this is plus two on the attack roll, so let me just put in two here. He could still miss. <laughs> I could still <laughs> cock it up. The dice hate me. No, it does oh, not miss. Nice. So, there you go. 11 points. Doing 11 points of damage instead of 6 points of miss damage and actually hitting it. Hooray! It, it, Bam. It, it's, that is a 18, which okay. means I can do one of my battle cries. Uh, and that would be... Uh, stay strong! Nearby ally gets plus two bonus to armor class until the start of my next turn. Yirondel, you get another two <laughs> armor class. Oh my god! Becoming gosh. even more invulnerable. The dire well wolf done. is uh, is swaying. Uh, uh, clearly, just just about dead. Um, and I'm going to move this where creature gray battle runs uh, over across here. Um, and the other were creature. Um, let's see. So we got that over there, that over there. Um, well, it's uh, unfortunately a little stupid. Oh, so to roll for it. it will roll for. Oh, would you like to roll for for Greyhelm? Uh, sure. Why doesn't uh, Tallfoot roll for him? One d six, Tallfoot. Oh, so so Greyhelm gets a, a, a sort of imposition, but doesn't uh, uh, actually do anything this round. Um, the were creature is going to move over here. Uh, see this huge thing, Winter stalk uh, uh, across over past the, the 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 corner, and its claws are out. It's it's seven feet tall. I actually have a a picture I can show you of sort of what they look like, but more undead than the one I have here. Uh, copy. Because a werewolf wasn't enough. It I had know. to be an undead werewolf, right? <laughs> yes. So that's sort of what it looks like. I told my kid we were fighting undead werewolves. He said, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have a question about turning dead then. So, uh, I, what is it? I guess I could see how much... I can only turn a certain amount, right? The, of yep. hit points. Uh, where's that spell? Not something I've used. Turn undead. Uh, if I'd known it were going to be undead, I might have boosted that spell. No. I know. 55 hit points are lower. Uh, to tell you, uh, because you can assess that as a meta question, uh, it is 55 hit points or lower. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. Just to tell you that. Um, so Werewolf is going to try and hit Irindel. It rushes up. Um you're also, uh, so you're engaged with that, uh, so he gets to do that. Um, so your AC is what, 38, right? No, 28. 28. 28. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I can still hit. Oh, so close. Oh, so close to a critical. That's uh, what it's going to take is a crit. Actually, oh, you were attacked by the dire wolf before, so that's a pack mate, so I'm actually going to hit you. Uh, because of their pack attack. Oh. Pack attack. Uh, so he is actually going to do 20 points to you. Okay. Um, runs up, uh, essentially takes advantage of you facing the wolf, rushes up and swings with these claws and cuts into your side. Uh, winter on 17. 
Okay. Um, Winter is definitely assessing this and seeing that, okay, this is an undead. Valish, smile on me now. I'm going to turn it, um, which means I roll wisdom plus charisma plus level versus MD. All right. MD is a 19 for this thing. And my charisma bonus is, and somebody's going to have to show me how to do macros on these things sometime. Okay. Um, uh, oh, good. I get a plus one for charisma also. Woo! Holy cow! <laughs> There's a good reason I chose the goddess of fortune. <laughs> wow, that is an okay. Uh, so a natural twenty, the target is destroyed. So this thing turns, great big beast. It 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 sees you and it roars and you will. What does that look like when when, when your your effect for that? Um. Well. Uh, that's a good question because it's supposed to be sort of a random event that happens that's going to t- take it out. Um, you know, if it had a sword, I'd say it fell on its sword, but um, it doesn't. So, so let's say it rushes towards you um, and maybe gets uh, a paw stuck in the mud as it comes. But this thing is new. You know, not that that uh, uh, hasn't gotten that vitality of being raised for a while, and it'll probably kind of tear the limb is it gets stuck in the mud and then it'll kind of fall and uh, uh, again get caught and it'll kind of roll <laughs> around until it's broken itself apart in the mud. How's that? Okay. I like that. I like that. So it's just getting, it's getting stuck on different things as it goes and pulling itself yes. apart. Probably that the works. last little bit will, will come over and fall at your feet. <laughs> and I'll stomp on it with my booted heel. All right. Tall foot. Tiny clawed hand that you step on. William. William. I think you might be muted, uh, Dusty, or your mic is doing the thing again. Oh, nope, I got it. Okay. Yep, I was muted. No, I was just going to say, I wish I'd seen that so I could just go, you are one of the luckiest sons of <laughs> Wow. Um, wow. Okay, so we've got, I'm going to grab a blanket or something out of my pack. Mm-hmm cover this guy okay because i'm assuming he's just kind of underneath his wood next to the wood pile underneath the overhang yeah uh so we'll say that's a quick action yeah i'm gonna go ahead and cover him and then peek out um i didn't see what happened with winter but so you can see um, those two wolves out there yeah there's two wolves out there yep i'll just go ahead and i'll tell you the truth i don't really want to fight two wolves (laughs) are you gonna shadow step or yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shadow step over by the uh, um, well. Okay, uh, so uh, you just need to make uh, your shadow step roll. It's against the highest MD nearby is an 11. Okay. Get myself in a position to attack next round. Okay. Uh, let me see which one I made the macro for. Not that. Thought I made a macro for this. Oh. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna roll it. Okay. So that will go off. Uh, so you cool. will you will go into shadows. I always put the little ninja thing on you to show that you are in shadows there. Uh, the wolves, only two of them left, and they will sweep around. Winter, you are about to be attacked by two wolves. What is your AC? Um, from memory, it's seventeen. Let's see. Yes. Okay. The first wolf will miss. Second wolf gets a bonus because his pack mate is attacking. But the second one will hit for five points of damage. Okay, and the first wolf gets cursed because I'm a tiefling. Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, so it probably uh, uh, goes to, to get at you. And again, like the other ones, uh, is sort of 
stuck in the mud. Uh, so right now it is uh, uh, effectively, we'll call it stuck, uh, which we'll say it's uh, uh, vulnerable to your attack on the next round. Okay. All right. The dire wolf is going to make a desperate lunge at Irondel, hopefully to, to capitalize on his uh, uh, pack mate's attack. Uh, Irondel, you're 26 still? I'm still at 26. I'll drop to 24 as soon as uh, I get to Oh, not even close. Goes to bite at you, but he is so weak and staggered uh, that he, he his uh, uh, chaw doesn't even come close to biting you. Uh, your action, Arendelle. Right. I still have... I don't have plus two. I have plus one. Not anything beyond the escalation die. Uh, uh, There's no song right now. Uh, plus two to your AC is what you've got. That's it. Okay, yeah. Right. Yes. All right, so that will hit the dire wolf, and uh, the sword cracks into its side, and it will stagger, slide, and fall in, and crash into the ice, and sink below it, and drift downstream. I t- turn to face the, the weir beast. Mm-hmm. All right. Shikan, you are not engaged in melee, and we are... I going- am not. You are... This. Now it is round three, escalation die three. Uh, mm-hmm. It's your action. Cool. I am going to. Use my bardic attack, sound burst. Okay. I play an incredibly loud song and targeting the were beast. But I roll really badly, unfortunately. Oh. So, Does it however, that's miss? half damage. Um, well, you're forgetting. I, I mean, remind me if I'm wrong about this, but with the lower thing, I get to do it once a turn. Let's uh, let's take a check on that. That somebody gets to re-roll. I thought it was once per battle, but let me check. Easy enough for uh, us to figure out. Knowledge. Oh, I think you're probably right. I think it's a one-time thing. I think it's only once per battle. Yep, once per battle. Sorry. However, that is still uh, 13 thunder damage. Plus four because you get, you miss damage gets four additional damage because of my invocation. Yep. Thank you very much. So that's 17. Unfortunately, damage. Irondelle, I believe, will take uh, and Irondelle takes Two damage yeah. or six? Maybe. Yes. I don't know how no, no. We'll say. we'll say two. It'd be <laughs> cruel for me to do. Oh, it's up to you. So, uh, twenty-six, thirteen plus four, seventeen points of damage on the wear beast. All right. And two points of damage to Irondale, I'm afraid. Um, and so, what does she experience when 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 that hit goes off there? Ringing in your ears. Boom. <laughs> and and the the wear will kind of <laughs> stagger from that that sound burst hitting it. It will still try to strike at uh, uh, Arendelle. It needs it desperately 24. needs a crit to be able to hit you, but it does not achieve that as it essentially uh, tries to strike at you. Uh, it does get a plus two on its next attack on you uh, from its miss effect, um, and we come to seventeen winter. Um, I'm, Winter's going to use her Javelin of Faith against the wolf that is already stuck. Um, okay. And you can, yeah, the Javelin of Faith you can do in, when you're engaged, right? Oh. Um, I'm assuming so. I think it's close quarters, isn't it? Let's see. One ne- it says one nearby enemy. So is that considered... Oh, it's a ranged spell. You're correct. No, yeah. I can't then. I will just use my spear. Okay. Um, that wolf's AC is a 17. Um, even though it's stuck? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so we'll say minus 2, so we'll say 15. I thought you said it was going to be vulnerable, which means you'd be critting it on an 18 or better. Oh, uh, so uh, which would you prefer, winner? <laughs> I don't think it mattered, did it? Oh, wait, did the roll not go through? I didn't see the, the roll yet. The, it's asking for the escalation, so hold on. Um... 
three. Which one would I prefer? If it's a if it's an eighteen, is it critical? Yep. Um, I'll take that. Okay. So what was your total there? So fifteen <laughs> will miss, but you'll do two points of miss damage on it. Uh, so you will will uh, achieve that, uh, William Tallfoot. Isn't it six points of miss damage with that bonus where we're getting plus four? Uh, I think that's for nearby. Yes. Yeah, oh yes, that's to be nearby when I do the Ah, uh, right, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. This is the nope. downside of splitting the party. Yes, I mm. know. <laughs> Such is life. William. I will move over to here and pop out of shadow and stab this wolf, the other one on winter, like right in the neck. Okay. AC is a 17. Sneak attack as well. Yes. Yes. And I will do a... It's with any thief attack. So I could do... Um, I'll do an evasive strike. Okay. About while I'm at it. Need to hit a 17. Escalation die is a 3. Uh, so you will just do miss damage on it then, right? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to use my lethal, Rachel, oh. and okay. re-roll. Okay, go ahead. There we go. All right. Uh, so you would do 12 points of damage to it? Doubled. Sneak it. Plus, I still have to roll oh, my sneak that's attack. that's right. I think it's also doubled. Uh, so that'll be tw 24 you've done with that. Right, and then... Man, I know I added all this stuff. It's a 6... D6, I think, isn't it? For yeah. sneak attack? For another 6 points. And that will kill it. Just kill it. Uh, as you pop out and drive uh, your blade uh, into this thing's neck, and it will, will be a yelp as it goes down. Right. And by the way, I think because I rolled so high, I might have hit on my... Uh, lethal it reset okay uh awesome uh the the wolf uh will will uh, pull itself up and take a nip at winter uh and uh it's gonna try and hit winter what's your ac again 17 and it will not hit it's angry tries to bite at you and misses the dire wolf is dead Irondel. Okay. All right, I strike the weir beast again with a smite. Okay. AC 17. So, 20 points of damage? Yes. Okay. Uh, you will hit it. It staggers uh, between the shot uh, uh, of the sound blast that hit it and your strike. It staggers back. It's in very bad shape. Excellent. Uh, Escalation die four, Shikan. Okay. Um, does Irondel want to roll for Greyhelm? D6. Sure. So, okay. uh, Greyhelm is getting around but uh, doesn't get a strike in. I'm not engaged, so I'm going to use Chaos Bolt on the Wear Beast. <laughs> All right. Zap. Oh, that will definitely hit it. <laughs> uh, and uh, was the attack roll even? Did you get the chaotic benefit? Uh, no, no, 13. Oh, okay. So. Uh, that will hit it, and the, the bolt kind of cuts through it, uh, and it will drop. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's negative energy, it's essence will give way and it will collapse to the ground before it can get its final strike in where it would miss on Arendelle Winter on 17 So I'll use my spear and make another attack Okay. Take a, take a jab at the wolf uh, hoping that it's going to throw itself on my spear Yes, AC 17 Let's see Sorry, i got to get that. Scroll up. 
And it's probably asking me, but I'm not seeing the window. There it is. So that will hit it. So you'll do six points to it. Yep, that's about all I can do. Okay, it is still up. Uh, Malay is not not your strong suit. No, it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Tallfoot. And I was wrong. Lethal didn't reset. That's only if you have a feet. Okay. I will simply Could you use some help here, darling. <laughs> yes, I'm moving over, except it won't let me move the token. Oh, let me grab it and pull it over there for you. Yeah. Okay, there, there we go. go. All right, yep. you get your sneak attack bonus then, right? Yes. Okay. Need to hit a 17. Escalation die is a 4. Okay, so plus 4. How do I add the... I need to switch the macro so it asks for the escalation die. I don't know how to do that. So add a 4 to this. Okay. And I'll do a tumbling strike. Well, actually, no, it doesn't really make much of a difference. I can just use the basic strike. Okay. Uh, so that will hit, and you'll do uh, 12 points to it. Um, and uh, it is going to try and get one more nip in here uh, uh, on you, uh, and it's going to try and hit winter again. Uh and we'll miss again on a winter. Uh, Irindel, everything seems calm and quiet over on your end of the, the, the field. You can add two more points to that, by the way. I oh, okay. okay. It is just about dead. All right. I'm going to begin circling around. Uh, or maybe if I saw the, the weird creature cross the ice in a, yeah. in a tougher spot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that same area and try to cross over. Okay, side. I'm just going to assume we'll, we'll put you, know, you can go ahead and put yourself over on the other side of the map wherever you'd like, uh, over by these buildings here. Okay, sounds good. Um, and uh, uh, Shikan? Oh, I'm going to take a recovery. Uh, as oh, take a recovery? Side. Sounds good. Yeah. Go ahead yes, and roll that. I'm going to uh, nip across as well, along with everyone else. Okay. And we'll be advancing through here, looking in. Advancing in good order behind our war my warrior companions. Uh, you can see that it looks like windows and doors are open, like uh, uh, there was some kind of fight here, um, but it's clearly mm -hmm. been searched. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it doesn't look, you're not hearing the sounds of anybody, uh, any other attackers coming out from anywhere. Winter on 17, this thing is on its last legs. Well, Winch is going to take one more strike at it then. Okay, and it's Escalation Dive 5. That will that hit. Another, is that another crit roll? It is. Wow. Mm. So, this time, <laughs> what, what does it look like when you crit with your spear on this wolf? Well... You know, it's all about luck with Winter. So it's it's she's moving into it, and it's trying to get to snap at her, but it slips on the car the, the remains of the the werewolf that was there before, and so it literally falls on her spear. Oh, its head goes through the spear basically, and it'll be that, and it's uh -huh. gone. It mm -hmm. is dead. All right, uh, let me take our 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 uh, five minute break here. Uh, uh, since we just kind of finished out the fight, and then we'll continue on. Is that okay? Yes. All right. That works. That way I can get a bottle of water. I'll be yeah. right back. Well done, everyone. That was very good. I have to confess that I ran that whole combat without using the escalation die because I forgot to keep updating it. So I, <laughs> I screwed up. But never mind. No harm done. Um, 
William wanted to know how to put the escalation die in. If you bring up your character sheet, uh, right at the top you'll see there's a PC, NPC and setup radio buttons. If you click on the setup radio button, you will see a basic macro called the escalation die macro. And I just put a number in there, one, two, three, four, five at the moment. As the game progresses, I just update that and then I use the at esc die macro in my macros. And that makes it a little easier. If you leave it as the default, you'll get prompted for the escalation die as um, Winter does. But I find that irritating because I click the button and nothing happens until I've moved my character sheet out of the way to enter the pop up because it pops up underneath my character sheet where I can't see it. Have you considered, Lowell, making a rollable token for your escalation die? No, I hadn't. Because that lets you have one token on the map and just select which face it shows. Oh. So you could you use your existing six dice as the token images for a rollable token. Oh, okay. And then you just need to right-click and go select a face. And you don't have to keep dragging new ones on. You can just have one on the map at all times and change which side it's showing oh i'll look up uh how to do that's a great idea Sorry. it's it's I, I kind of feel a little lame because there's so much functionality in roll 20 uh but i only i can only kind of scratch the surface uh say uh, uh i don't like to get too okay. too involved with it <laughs> yeah no it's it's fine i was but, just going oh you know you could use a rollable token for what you're doing there and it would be maybe a little easier for you oh yeah that's certainly only slightly okay right i'm back back yep. uh, and i'm back also back dusty are you back yes I, i'm back okay i had a, i had a gm that used a macro to make a fireball and it would show up on the screen as a fire fireball as an animation uh, mm. that's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yep do that if you have the pro account they've there's a function mm -hmm. over on the left that lets you put fire animated fire on the map uh so many things i, I, I have a pro account but i haven't haven't uh, haven't used, haven't it, used it too much I, I i did i did build a sheet uh off of an existing sheet and i felt very uh hyper competent when i did that uh, <laughs> so because it was somebody else's sheet <laughs> right. uh in any case uh <laughs> So uh, your group will gather together. Uh, you'll be able to, to, to pull uh, this person out. Um, they're kind of pale uh, and shaken. And uh, they will, will say, there are others in the main house uh, tied up. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to start going house to house in all the houses. Okay. Uh, so a quick move through uh, 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 by your group will will ascertain that cabinets have been ransacked, food has been taken, uh, 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 valuable goods have been looted. Uh, that's sort of the the general thing, and clearly it was a, a group of of men here. 
um, you will find uh, five more of the fate flame flame fate flame of this family uh, 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 tied up. Uh, clearly, some of their number have already been dispatched, um, and they will tell you uh, that uh, uh, that the Orndarks came. That family came down under cover of darkness, um, and uh, they killed the watchman, and they raided the household, uh, and uh, tied us up. And then, after that, we saw that there were these things with them these these uh, uh, beasts, these these great w- w- wolves, uh, and uh, uh, they commanded them. Uh, and then they were doing something out here by the well, but that's all we know. Mm-hmm. That's what I suspected. Damn hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> Says the half orc. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Half culture. Yes. <laughs> True. You're, you're justified. Do you know where the Orndarks went after they left? these beasts here uh i i don't i don't know uh uh this happened a, f- a couple of days ago uh uh but we've been tied up uh they were around until uh earlier this morning uh and uh, then they headed out did they speak of anything uh, let's see uh Say, uh, they 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 talked about the the calling, something they were calling. Uh, they don't know what that that meant. Uh, what was what was going on? Uh, they and they mentioned they mentioned a king, and they kind of get quiet when they say that because they know what that implies. Mm-hmm. Can um. The halfling track where they went. Can you track them? You could try. It's not. It's not in your. Uh, uh, not great in your skill set. But I'll. I'll let you make a try with a wisdom check. No, no, no. The 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 uh, guide. Oh, the halfling guide. Yeah, the halfling guide. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he will spend some time going around and and reading the tracks while this is going on. Uh, <laughs> And can Winter take a look at the uh, ritual at the well? I know it's gotten scuffed up, but can she try to determine what kind of spell it was using her Citadel Archivist background? That seems perfect. Let's let's start with you having that, and then I'll I'll give you what the tracker can give you. Uh, it's definitely some kind of lure, some kind of a ritual. It, the 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 elements of it echo. The uh, some of the the Lich King's kind of magic, um, it's done poorly, uh, uh, as if someone were working from from tracings or or instructions, uh, and it looks like it's created some kind of beacon to draw something here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But, so would Winter know what to do to to remove this to cancel it? Uh, you could certainly uh, do that. Uh, it would be a kind of a ritual thing. It would take a, a few hours to do. Does, mm-hmm. that, does that seem reasonable? We don't want to be stuck out overnight, right? Uh, gray battle will if, come back if we oh. can avoid it. <laughs> Uh, Gray Battle will, will point back. He'll say, it looks like some of them went to towards the Barrows uh, with the ones that we saw where the, 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 the bodies were taken from. Uh, mm-hmm. But it looks like the majority of people, and he kind of points back uh, away further on past, uh, headed off towards uh, uh, Yester uh, that mm-hmm. way. Uh, well, this is going to be far more difficult than I hoped for, though. 
and Great Battle will say, should we, should we go back? Again, perhaps a note of hope in his voice. Mm-hmm. I was going to suggest that we would take the Fate Flame family survivors back to town for safekeeping and then strike again tomorrow rather than stay here overnight if we could avoid it. But I'm up to... That's just my suggestion. Well, the... I'm I'm not a Lich King fan, so I'm happy right. to keep striking. But I guess I'm thinking of if it's a time sensitive. I'm, I'll ask them: Did they take anybody else with them? Are you missing anybody that you don't know? We know they took at least one to sacrifice at the Barrows. My, Who else is missing? Well, I we there there were another another five of us who they took out one by one. Um, they took another one this morning. Um, and of course, they put William there by the, or, or uh, Thomas there by the the well. Um, uh, uh, they uh, clearly they were going to use him today for that. But, but so if if, I, if they sa- if they sacrificed people, uh, did they where the bodies? They're in the well. Okay. So if we look in the well, is everybody accounted for, or did they leave? With well, them? that would require climbing down into the well, <laughs> <laughs> which I will do. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I guess my point is is that that that's part of my background is not letting innocent people get gacked. Okay. Oh, let's um, let's let's have you make a roll. I'm actually going to make this a constitution roll. I <laughs> come up all sick. <laughs> uh, just a straight con roll. Yeah. Uh, plus two. So add two. I have a kind of fourteen. Okay. So, 15. Uh, so you'll get down and you'll kind of move the bodies. the The well is befouled. Uh, clearly, whatever magic was used here has has fouled this well. Um, and you will count out uh, four bodies here. They have a a drained look to them, as if the 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 sacrifice itself ate some of the energy from them from their souls. Um, uh, and when you're down here, uh, you'll definitely feel a kind of a, a vibration, kind of a thrumming sound on the stone itself around you, uh, as if magic is kind of coursing through that. Uh, but you'll be able to come up and say that definitely uh, there's at least one more person who hasn't been accounted for. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll mention that I don't think the energy, not that you thought it was, but there's, the well still seems to be energized, which I don't know about you guys, but preferably for me, given the fact that they have another victim, I would say stay here, do a ritual, keep these people safe, cleanse the well, and then as soon as next light, move on before anything worse happens. But that's just Paul Foot's opinion. Great Battle will say, I could take these people back to town. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> and lose our tracker. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the eldest of the Fate Flames here will say, if we can gather uh, our... Our, our clothes, uh, our, our our leggings. We can prepare ourselves. We can we can if we leave now. We can make it to uh, Denmark by dark. Um, that was kind of what I assumed. I wasn't thinking that we needed to guide them back. They know how to get to town. We just need to get the stuff, and it's their house. Yep. We okay. Could, we, I'm fine with we, that. Could, we could send Greyhelm back with them for protection. We'll, uh, we'll assume since he's going to be here next time. I just don't want to want to throw him out. Ah, on okay. That thing. Um, the eldest, uh, 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 Hans Fate Flame, uh, will come and will say, uh, our family have some treasures, things we've kept, uh, uh, items of worth, 
uh, can we perhaps give those to you if you are striking out? I don't see why you couldn't. Uh, we, we would probably find useful things if if you want, and if we're lucky, we can still save your family member. Please, please. Uh, and he will go into the house, and he will clearly uh, o- open floorboards mm-hmm. and pull out the family treasures. Uh, and uh, he'll open up a, a trunk, and there's there's money in there, but also clearly some magic items, uh, which he will dis- uh, offer up to you. They say they are all all minor things, thanks to the time when our family was more warriors, um, uh, and we've kept them uh, for that time. Since these things are not, we don't use them casually. Um, and here is what he will offer you guys. Uh, he has a set of three rune stones. That's a mm-hmm. standard thing. Uh, he has a shirt. Uh, that uh, uh, looks like soft linen, but it seems very resilient, um, and uh, it looks like it actually provides uh, sort of light armor uh, with a plus one AC and also plus one PD. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he has uh, a, a set of boots that are... Uh, clearly elven made uh they have that sort of beautiful craftsmanship look like a a gift given to his family some time ago and uh those are in fact boots of elven kind uh they standard give you a plus one to disengage checks and a plus four to any kind of stealth or move quietly uh two more things uh, he has a belt, uh, and uh, Hans seems actually kind of particularly proud of this. He will say, uh, this belt, uh, if you keep an edged weapon uh, on it uh, for a time, it will, uh, it's dwarven made, it sharpens that weapon. And uh, the effect of that is that it gives you a plus two to your crit range uh, up until the point at which you actually do a crit in a fight. So it's only a single crit, and then it's done. It's, it's, no then it's done for that fight, yep. Oh, for that fight, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because it's a belt, it gives you a plus one recovery. Uh, the last thing is more elaborate. Uh, you see him kind of hesitate when he goes to draw this out, this, this kind of necklace with uh, some black gemstones on it. Um, and, but he will carefully hand that to you, Shikan, uh, and he will say, this is uh, a, a life stone. Uh, it uh, protects you uh, 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 and keeps you from passing on. And effectively, it's a plus five bonus to death saves if the failure would kill you. Yeah. Also has that classic uh, for necklaces plus one to your saves uh, if your ten hit points are lower. Oh. So you you uh, you all may decide how you wish to distribute those items. Very good. Well, he gave me the necklace specifically, so I might put that on and say thank you very much for lending this to me and I shall endeavor to return it to you. Uh, Thank you, uh, Master Bard. uh, My family would be gone if not were for you and and your companions that that arrived here today. Mm. Well, this is one of the things we've come here to prevent on behalf of the Emperor. And uh, he will note that. You can see him kind of, oh, oh the emperor, and the emperor sent you. And, and uh, again, that sort of awe that comes when that name is invoked. And perhaps a little fear, because when icons tread the land, uh, 
uh, the, the, it is the, the, the peasants who, who, who suffer. Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you want to d divvy those things out? Does anyone else want the uh, Dwarven Belt of Sharpening? It, it won't help me. It won't help Winter at all because she has a uh, spear. That's right. So you can, ta you can take it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like the extra recovery and it will help me a lot, especially with the my smites and stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. High damage. I was going to suggest the boots for William. Uh, I could take the boots or the shirt if you want someone else who could use the stealth. I already have boots that give me plus one disengage. Oh, that's oh right. do you? Yeah, I took the the, the face kicker boots. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the plus one um, stealth might mean something if somebody else wants to be able to stealth because I could take right. the shirt or I could take the boots. Well, why don't really you good. take the care. shirt? And I will wear the boots. Sounds good. For the moment. So that's light armor plus one to your AC and plus one to your PD, William. So it acts as light armor with an additional plus one then? Yes. Okay. Doesn't give a bonus to your MD though. That is understandable. How do you even add that into the character sheet? Uh, under item, I believe, under your AC or the, the thing. <laughs> Yep. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, the rune stones, who's going to carry those? Going to split them up or what? That probably makes sense. We split them up. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. And uh, uh, FYI for those, uh, the rune stones essentially are a activate, quick action, uh, and a fight. You can uh, use that to enhance weapons or armor. Uh, to, to give yourself a bonus, and the bonus is random. Gives you a plus one base, and then gives you a random extra effect. Oh, I just realized I'm in trouble here. Yeah. How oh, so? No, not, not. I now have three magic items. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many rune stones were there? There's only three. Correct. There's only three. Yeah, so... I don't, I don't need one. You guys can so what is the last thing you took was the life stone right uh no that was the first thing i took and then we split the and i then so i put that on first because he handed it to me specifically okay and i put it on straight away so the... and then i then we div divvied up the magic items and i put the boots of elven kind on okay well uh uh you will, as you put those on, it's sort of the last thing. You'll you'll feel that sort of strains of the elvish uh, lore kind of coming in. Uh, uh, you feel uh, that uh, touch of elven poetry uh, uh, go through your your mind as you you, you do that, and uh, uh, you will find yourself kind of humming along elven poems and tunes throughout the day. Mm -hmm. It actually is the most appropriate quirk for you possible. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, and how is that going to bother me as a bard? <laughs> I'm just going to sit here extemporizing elven poetry for the rest of the day. <laughs> because maybe you don't speak elvish, so it drives you crazy that you hear it, but you can't, you don't understand it. Well, I, I suspect... Sound that matters, you know. I, I suspect if you, if you, when you go to sing more guttural human songs that uh, you may find yourself uh, 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 perhaps interrupted but but for the moment that is the the, the pressure that is on you mm -hmm. yep. uh, uh, so you will will gather yourselves together uh, 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 take these items uh, you will send uh, the fate flames on they will head out and gray battle will say, do we press on, or are we uh, staying here this evening? We need to cleanse this. We need to close this the, this calling, this ritual. Okay. Yes, I agree. Because we're, we're, the last thing we want is something to come up behind us. If we don't close this, it's poss entirely possible something could come through. All we right. We don't need anything coming through. Uh, so uh, I assume that uh, Arendelle and... Uh, 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 winter will will spend the time 
and uh, uh, lay out what's necessary and then perform the rituals to to break this? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I Uh, also have time to take another recovery at some point. Absolutely, yeah. I guess I was going to suggest William and I would spend that time when we're not assisting uh, the ritual to prepare our defensive position for the evening. I was about to say that exact same thing. (laughs) Okay. We're we're walking deading one of these. uh, (laughs) Okay. We're um, making making it comfortable and defensible for the night out here in what is essentially an occupied territory. Uh, so, so certainly the, the the actually the large house is probably the the best one, the most uh, well tended and fortified. You'll be able to block up the doors and uh, windows. Uh, they they secure pretty tightly because this is meant to keep it closed against the winter. Uh, there's plenty of firewood uh, in there, uh, and while uh, a goodly amount of the food was taken uh, by the Orndarks. Uh, it looks like there's still uh, enough left that uh, uh, you can eat uh, spare cheese and uh, 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 barreled apples and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to, to get that very well secured. Good. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Irindel, winter, uh, I want to kind of just make a general uh, assessment of your your success here. So... If I could have you roll a wisdom check, uh, plus a background that you think is appropriate for this kind of of magic. I have two backgrounds. One is the Albert trainer in Horizon Circus Magicus, but I think probably more appropriate is the itinerant warrior nine of the Cathedral Seraph. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that later one does. Um, and winner, what do you want to use? Uh, Citadel Archivist. Okay. So I'm sure I'm sure I read somewhere. Uh, Somewhere I've read about something like this for cleansing the well and closing portals and closing rituals. Oh, yeah, it was the Tome of uh, Dark Waters. Excellent. So a 20 and a 25. Uh, so it'll just take a couple of hours. This this was c- clearly not done with any sophistication. Uh, and uh, uh, you will be able to, to sort of crack this. Um, and you'll feel whatever kind of infernal draw uh, was uh, occurring here uh, dissipates. Uh, so whatever has been summoned may continue, but no new things will will arise from this or be drawn. Uh, do we and- do we believe that the influence was purely the Willich King, or do we think that Diapolis was involved with this ritual as well? Everything here seems to point to the Lich King's involvement. Okay. The, the 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 style of the magic, the the undead, everything. You don't haven't seen anything that points to the Diabolus, though you've seen her sign before around here with those bandits. Yes, and and also you said it was an infernal magic, so that's why I asked. Oh, that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, evil, I should have said, but good good call. Um, so I assume watches that kind of thing. Oh yeah. I'd imagine so. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And in winter, would have asked Greyhelm to pull the bodies out of the uh, the well because, as part of the ritual, I would assume that what's going to happen is we're going to cleanse the well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you'd be able to get them out, uh, uh, wrap them for burial. Uh, Grey Battle will actually probably hike back and get the other body uh, and bring that so so that can be properly taken care of uh, and bring it back here um, and. Uh, you'll be able to do that that ritual as as night falls here. Uh, of course, it is the mountains, and uh, the the sun uh, is blocked fairly soon, and so it uh, uh, the darkness falls uh, quite suddenly when it finally finally comes. And, and what is that? A last body is the body that Grey Battle is bringing back. Is that the last person that was missing? Uh, no, there's still one more missing. Oh, okay. Yeah, one more from the household. That body was from the, a different stead who was, they, they disappeared some days before mm-hmm. from, ah. one of the, from the stead where everyone suddenly vanished. Yes. Um, so you guys will, will uh, uh, you know, take watches and uh, sleep, rest and relax uh, uh, as best you can nervously. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
uh, Arendelle. Yes. It's it's the early morning, uh, maybe an hour or two before dawn, and you hear something in the distance. Um, it's not like anything you've ever really heard before. It's kind of you've been in the mountains before well you fought what, what, what kind of terrain did you fight in uh, mostly it was a little further to the south around a lot of the hell holes okay so uh, but i have have spent some time in in, in northern territory just not a, not a lot of campaigns so the hell holes change the land right uh they they uh, create great chasms they crack the earth shifts around it um and that's kind of a, a, a nightmarish sound. Um, and what you hear in the distance reminds you of that, of the very earth itself turning and shifting off in the distance. And it kind of echoes through here like a train, you know, uh, in the distant night. Uh, and it's definitely from the direction towards the Yester estate. All right, I mean, gazing into the darkness, I don't see any, any indication of the sound, like light or, or... No, no, you don't. Yeah. All right, uh, assuming it sounds far away, I don't see a need to awaken everyone. Okay. If they aren't woken up by the sound itself, and I will tell them about it in the morning. Uh, when uh, the rest of you arise uh, uh, and uh, gather yourselves together as dawn is coming... The sound is apparent. It oh, is it's ongoing. Yes. Okay. I thought it was just uh, temporary. Oh okay. no, no! It it continues on and perhaps gets louder by the time that they've awoken. It's it's louder. You're still not seeing anything in that direction. Uh, how do you? How do you, the group wish to proceed? We were going that way anyways. You mm. Might as well investigate. All right. Yep. D so if we rested the night, does that mean we got recoveries? Oh no! This is this is this is a terrible place to sleep. It's cold. It's outdoors. <laughs> you know, you're nervous. You don't get a full rest. No. You'd need to be back at town with a nice woolen blanket and feather bed and food provided by Don Sibian. You know, and a bath. And a bath. Probably where, where all the others that you sent away are. Gray Battle is, is equally irritated that uh, that uh, he's is as a hobbit he's had to go go hard uh, uh, travel. For a tracker, he seems uh, to appreciate the, 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 the life of luxury a little bit too much. Okay. Uh, gather yourselves together, uh, move out, head out, um, and travel. Uh, that way there is a road there um, and the, 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 the mountains nearby, uh, snow on the ground and you tr travel up and you may be an hour's walking and the noise has gotten louder and louder um, and then you will see in the distance uh, a set of broken buildings like uh, houses and like a, a, f a fallen tower and so on. It looks like in a, a, a state that's buildings have kind of uh, crumbled. And Grey Battle will go, oh no. Uh, he goes, that, that looks like that might be the Yester estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We shouldn't be there yet. What do you mean we shouldn't be there yet? It's at least another three hours before we get to the Yester estate. So the estate mm -hmm. has moved. And you guys, so as you're watching, you will see the estate slowly moving your direction. And it's kind of... <laughs> the entire estate? The entire estate. The ground's there. You see the ground kind of move and crack around it. And uh, it's like it's riding on the back of something. 
All right. Um, and you can Perhaps actually see probably that there are some some figures in those ruins. I've heard of such things called uh, living dungeons that travel in this manner at times. It looks like that's what this might be. Living dungeon. I, I say it incredulously. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, Does someone want to fill, fill uh, uh, William in on this? Or shall uh, I? I? Living dungeons exist. They are things that rise up from the underworld, uh, usually reaching the surface. Um, there's a lot of them near where I come from because the biggest island in the middle of the sea is covered in them. Uh, past the necropolis there is Omen which is a giant which is a, a, an ever-growing island of living dungeons. They are kind of like architecture that's popped up from the underworld like bubbles in the beer. Uh, they can move around of their own accord. They populate themselves with monsters created magically or bred from nothing. They Unpleasant devour things. other architecture. Yes. So I've heard, yes. They certainly make a mess of things that they run into and are threats to any part of civilization. Uh, and well, they are killed. They, because they are alive, they can be killed and therefore just turn into ruins at that point but they are invariably dangerous places well, all right then <laughs> and and it looks to you like it is it is coming moving towards uh the uh, uh fate flame estate um and just as a gauge of the the direction and such it looks like if it continues on uh, it will head towards Denmark. Now we know what they were s s calling. Yep, I would say so. We must stop this beast before it devours the other towns. Yes. W would it have already gone through any of the other estates on this trajectory? No. Okay. So this might be something new. Um... If it was three hours away at the speed this thing's moving, how long has it been moving? Can I do the math? Do, 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 do. Uh, you would say uh, that... Since uh, the sound started in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, and the travel, you would guess, da, 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 early morning. You would say that if it continues at this good, uh, steady walking rate that it's going, uh, that uh, by midnight uh, 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 it would be close to Denmark. Okay. Well, on the positive side, we won't have to walk back to town. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just ride it out. Hmm? Uh, well, I... <clears throat> Meta, I'm just making a dune joke here about riding the sandworms. No, oh, yes. <laughs> oh. Um. Well, for those of you who know what these things are, what do we do? Walk up and hop on? I don't get it. Uh, we must stop it and the best way to do that is to enter it and find its source of its life force and, st and put an end to it. It does look like there are some figures uh, in and amongst the ruins there um, but, but at this distance it's hard to tell what they are. Mm -hmm. We should certainly find it's probably those figures are probably the, the Orndark clan or more of their resurrected ancestors we should get closer and 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 have a good look yeah. and see what to do at that point but yeah i think uh, that you are right we we to stop this we will have to go in and uh hopefully without a great deal of trouble um work out what to destroy in the dungeon to make it stop all right to use if it's not too powerful for us and in which case we should flee but oh, yes <laughs> and and warn, the, and warn Dan Marek, of course yeah. Tophet? I was just going to say to use the dune analogy um, is there <laughs> excuse me at any point 
relatively soon where we might be able to effectively hop on from cover as this thing moves past? Uh, I would say, yeah. I mean, it's not moving that fast. Uh, uh, you guys have some distance on it. Uh, it's a rocky plateau. So certainly uh, if you wanted to uh, surprise uh, the figures that were on there, if you could make a decent stealth roll, you could certainly do that. I mean, do you guys want to try that, or at least get ourselves prepared to effectively not just run up to it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Sounds like a good idea. All right. Well, uh, let me then show you a map. If I may, and I'm going to grab... Where is my... Grab this, pull this over. Do this. Okay. And I'm going to put some figures uh, in and amongst. Imagine that these are, are kind of broken down buildings and, and ruins that are around here. So these walls are not intact. Uh, uh, they have, have crashed and collapsed. Um, and let me grab my... So you're saying they don't look as warm and, and comfortable as they look on the map? No, they look, they look super warm and comfortable. Not. <laughs> So when the when the dungeon as we're preparing all this fast, when the living dungeon pops up, it acts literally like a bubble from under. It's not trying to keep anything together or save buildings or move something on oh. the top side as a whole necessarily. Gen- it depends on the dungeon, really. Um, sometimes it will devour it as as food. Sometimes it will incorporate the architecture into itself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it will just push it aside and it slides off as a a bunch of rubble. It really depends on the dungeon. So, Omen itself is living dungeon upon living dungeon, where new ones pop up from underneath, displacing the previous ones, or devouring or incorporating them. It's a it's a ever changing pile of living dungeon, a place you do not want to go. Frankly. I guess. Yeah. Give him my. Then you are much stronger running. than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> this is all new to me. I'm like, holy. Yeah. I have heard many tales, which I can tell you, but they are all bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that that gist definitely. Mm-hmm. So, any advice about what we're not supposed to do as we go into these things? <sighs> Never. You know, um, don't go in. Is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> That's what I would tell sensible people. But we are not sensible people anymore. We are here to to save, you know, to to shoot the trouble that's in this area. And this looks like trouble. <laughs> so, so Winter said. Uh, so our idea is we probably want to catch one of these orange darks and interrogate him or persuade him to tell us where the heart is, correct? That would be a useful thing to do, yes. I agree. Or we should we should explain how they're controlling it. Mm. That's wrong. Alright. And I'm gonna draw a crevasse in the center so freehand let me uh and So there are things shambling around and about uh, uh, in and amongst the things. They're kind of hopping and uh, holding on to the rocks. And even as they get closer, you will see that they are clearly some kind of undead and that there is a uh, gap in the center of the the sort of the uh, between the buildings that seems to go down below. Yep. That would probably be where we need to go, unfortunately. So, uh, you guys have the advantage of having some setup time and some planning. How do you wish to approach this? If we could lure the undead into one area, I could turn many as many of them as I could. Mm-hmm. They have to be nearby, and preferably someplace they can't get at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that well, we could be in between, say, here, in between the two ruins, 
we could have Irondelle and Micah as a wall. You could be behind them, and we could. I could try luring them towards us using a song. Could bottle them up in that alley. And then they'd be in this alley, bottled up a bit. That sounds like so that might work. Try, try to done? get them to congregate here while we are here. That way, Winter could be one row back, perhaps, with the paladin and the fighter in front. Mm -hmm. and, and if I can, I can sneak up into the building that's on the right. Yeah, and, just... and William could flank them, and I could flank yeah. them, and we could try tracking them into a, a, a killing ground, essentially. Uh, that, that sounds good, because, of course, there's, it's not guaranteed that I'll be able to turn them. So okay. we have I to have, have a backup plan. I have full confidence. Good. <laughs> well, let's, let's go with that then. Well, if Valis smiles on us, we'll do it. Oh, so nice. William and Sharkon will f try to flank the undead through the ruins. Okay. Uh, while, while Arondel and Winter and Micah are um, blocking here, blocking in this cor uh, open space. And how's that sound? That sounds like you could do it, what I'm going to have you do uh, is someone is going to make essentially the sort of stealth check to see how successful you are at, at doing this and getting yourselves into position uh, without them being alerted and lured. How does that sound? Okay. Okay. Right. Who wants to make that stealth check? I think William's in charge of our stealth. Uh, I've had too many good rolls. Well, Shakana has the boots also, so you could make it probably oh, yes. just as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I rolled a 20. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, so we're going to go. Everyone can position themselves where they wish on the board then. Cool. And then, we'll, we'll st and then we will start. I can't seem to grab my token. Oh, is it? Uh, let me make sure I've got it set so that everybody control by. Yeah, it should be able to grab it. I don't know why. Uh, where do I you was having a problem too. It seems to be really particular yeah. about where your um, mouse is. All of a sudden. Today. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I had a, just one corner of the token was the only one I could grab. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't like this last week, hmm. two weeks ago, or whatever. Interesting. I just grabbed mine and moved it. I uh, just click in the middle and it shifts around. Just but yeah. So uh, where, William, have you placed yourself on the board? Do you want to be? Yeah. Okay. I should be. And Arendelle, where do you wish to be? And I'll, I'll go ahead and grab your figure. I got oh. it now. Oh, I had to get it. out of the session. It booted me when I tried to move my figure. And I got back in and it uh, works. I've actually had that problem before. Uh, but that's been a long time since that has happened. All right. Now, is that what's going on? Oh. So Greyhelm should be up next to Arendelle, I think, and yeah. went uh, behind Okay. Thing. The, the, the bonus there. Good call. Um, and let me just... Let's have everybody uh, roll uh, initiatives, if you would. Um, just... And you can go ahead and put that in just, just in case this all goes pear-shaped. Uh, so that's... Uh, 16. And... Excellent. There are no humans in the group, so don't have to worry about the double roll. Yeah. And your initiative is supposed to have your level in it, isn't it? Or not? Uh, it's your... It's your dex plus... D20 plus dex mod, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so plus you, yeah, so dex mod level. should include your initiative. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I get, it, it's plus level. I got. I rolled a oh. six. I haven't been adding level to mine. Uh -huh. So you are supposed to add level, yeah, because yes. the, the automatic roll doesn't do it then. Yeah. No, the, yeah, the no, the initiative roll I just did did. I rolled a six. It added my dex of four and my level of two. For twelve. If you use the initiative thing on the sheet. Yep. Yeah, mine didn't. Oh. Okay. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah, it is adding it the way I just calculated it weird. I combined my bonuses, I have a penalty. 
Ascending. Okay. C plus four. Yeah, no, it didn't. So weird. So why would yours be working and mine not? Strange magics. All right. So, uh, hmm. uh, we're going to uh, start. Uh, I, I'll let you, because this is a prize round. You've rolled very well for your stealth. I will let you, you've gotten yourselves into position. I will let you choose your order for actions. Uh, the bad guys will not go in this round, and then we'll use this initiative order for essentially escalation round one. Uh, so who wants to, to act first? Well, I think the first thing we were going to do, Shikan, were you going to step out and try to draw them with a song, or how are we going to draw them into the corridor? Uh, yes, that's that's a point. We're going to... I am going to use my balladeer, I think, to insult the crap out of the Lich King. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sound? That's that sounds good. <laughs> Somebody likes to live dangerously. Uh, go. Uh, so I'm going to use Balladeer and the Imperial Anthem, which means I'm rolling a charisma. Apparently, you don't take "Do not mock me" very seriously. <laughs> I, I don't know because hey, that was, a, you know, that was a challenge, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, sit on this, Lich King. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm going to roll my charisma bonus plus a d20 against, uh, I think it's a 15. I think so. Yep. Char plus level, so I'm rolling a d20. Can you get a bonus because you've just been thinking about it for a while? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. Good call, though. Nice try. <laughs> Fifteen. Exactly what I wanted. Okay. The the imperial anthem rings out, in played very nicely, with all of the extra bells and whistles. I am insulting the Lich King. All right. And I get um, some extra emperor. Um, dice, mm -hmm. and therefore I get some cursed dice from the Lich King. Okay, as well. And uh, do you have to roll those dice now? Uh, I suppose I can roll at least. Well, do you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you kind <laughs> of invoke that for effect for 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 the good stuff. I'll save the bad stuff for later. Okay. Uh, I actually now get to roll, I think, 3d6 mm -hmm. for my Emperor roll. Let's see yeah. how you do. I'm just going to increase it to 3 temporarily. I got a 5. Got a 5. All right, so... I will consider... And because I have a feet, that's a six. Oh, that's right. So <laughs> I will, will allow you to get a benefit at uh, later on as the, 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 uh, the Imperial force moves through you. Um, mm. uh, so uh, t should I move the figures and then uh, a little bit and then uh, the others take actions? I, get, I think that's what we're doing. Okay. We've got, yeah. All right. So all right. I'm one of the people acting as part of the ambush, and I'm drawing them into the ambush, and okay. then I think Winter's going to act. All right. So. Or someone else. <coughs> Come out. And... Whoops, I did, did that wrong. We seem to have a lot more icons on the map. Sorry. <laughs> we, we multiplied. I like it. It's the whole map. <laughs> yeah. it's like, suddenly there's four of us. It's like this bard ability I didn't know I had. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see two more climb out of the hole, uh, these sort of uh, uh, shaky ones. All right. Arendelle, you go on 20. These things are, are, are now rushing towards. They see the uh, 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 you standing there. 
they come moving towards you. What do you want to do? I'm going to wait until one approaches into melee range, and I'm going to attack. So if I can hold, okay. It actually, reaches me. Uh, so then I, I, I also do I do Halo though. Okay. Well, get that on. So what we'll do is is Winter will have you take your action, and uh, then we'll we'll do uh, uh, Irindel's action. Okay. Okay. So the first thing Winter will do is he'll she'll do her um, invocation of lore. Okay. Um, so that we have the chance to do the rerolls. Um, so let me do that. Uh, oh, not so good this time. Four is fine. <laughs> it's good for you. Yeah, no, so it we have, is. We have to wait longer before I can use it. Um, and then I'm going to try and turn the undead. And again, I guess if I remember this correctly, it's 55 hit points or less. It can be one die four of them. Okay. Do you want me to roll the one die four first, or do you want me to... I'm assuming that these are 55 hit points or less, or some of them are at least. Uh, all of them are 55 hit points or less. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so go ahead and roll a d4. Uh, four. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> uh, but I will let you, you pick which one you hit. Uh, go ahead and uh, which one do you want to strike? There's uh, a bigger ghoul. Uh, there's this, this screamer one that looks uh, more significant. Uh, the newly risen look like they are mooks, uh, if I may speak to the meta there. I'll take the screamer. Okay. Uh, so MD of 15. So by so, six. Which means uh, one die six times your level nine holy damage. One die ten. One die Sorry. ten. Uh-huh. And it'll be dazed. Uh, times my holy level. Does it do that? Let's see if it takes it. That didn't work at all. No, you want an asterisk, not a, not a cross, not an X. Okay, sorry. So I'm not even sure if that rolled correctly. Well, just go uh, ahead and roll 3d10. That should be fine. Okay. 3d10? Uh, right, because you're low. Oh, so 2d10, sorry. Ah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. So, well, the best the fickle, the, the fickle thing from your fate, right? <laughs> so mm. the holy light comes, uh, you know, that, that it's that it's, uh, you feel that that winter's thing isn't particularly visible and you'll see the screamer kind of turn and move and kind of stubs his toe uh and then continues on <laughs> it, is, it is your your, your it is fate powers this is this is how it yes uh so Arendelle. all might be muted Jason? I'm sorry. If I move forward, I'm worried about creating a gap, so should I probably just wait and let it close? Or does it matter at this point? I would say that we can kind of, that you can kind of do a step forward and I'll, I'll put this one up in contact with you. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. Uh, so uh, this one uh, has an AC of 22. All right. So I'm going to smite. Just a normal smite this time. Okay. All right. All right. Does that do miss damage? Uh, I missed it. Okay. I, it. Uh, see, smite does do miss damage. Let's see how much it is. Um, half damage. Ooh. Uh, so looks like that's going to be nine points. Uh, so you will hit into this thing, but it is it is tough, uh, and uh, you don't make uh, the the kind of contact that you want. Shikan on thirteen. Excellent. I am going to start uh, with my Song of Heroes, which uh, gives um, me and my nearby allies, which is pretty much everybody, yep. plus one attack bonus for the next turn until my turn comes around again. Okay. Song of Heroes. 
sort of elvish this time. Yes. Because it's a magic item. And I'm not engaged, so I'm going to use a Chaos Bolt on the Screamer. Okay. Uh, kind of lean over the, the rocks. Ooh, and that will <laughs> definitely hit. <laughs> and I need to roll my random energy. Sorry, I should just do that now. Uh, it's cold damage, cold damage for this battle. Then it will be cold damage for the whole battle okay. every time I use Chaos Bolt. Uh, so 21, uh, and it is dazed. Yeah, no. didn't get an action on no. this round. So 21 points total. It has been done to it. But you will will hit it and probably <laughs> hit some of that undead flesh and freezes it, and it will crackle and break as it moves. Yay. The mooks will kind of pour forward and we'll kind of move a mook up on there kind of scramble through come around uh so one of these uh uh ghouls this newly risen kind of breaks through the rubble uh leaps over and comes for you shikan mm -hmm. what is oh, your ac uh, it's AC of 15. 15. So it will actually miss as it comes yes. in for you. Good. Uh, William, uh, one of these lesser uh, ghouls comes comes rushing towards you, uh, trying to hit you. What's your AC? Uh, 17. Okay. So it will miss as well. So they're all kind of jammed up there. Mm -hmm. Um. And the other ghouls are kind of uh, locked in place for this round, I'm going to say, uh, because of the chaos of this. And the, the song is drawing them, and they're kind of rushing. They're sort of mindless, and they will get get jammed up on there. I will put the escalation die at one. And uh, I didn't go. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we not have you? I know, I'm super slow. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, you're after the mooks. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. So uh, I'm going to hide in shadows. Okay. Uh, so, the highest one is a 15 here. Let's see if this works. Piece of cake. 18. So, yep. you are in the shadows. You vanish out. Oof. Okay. Put your little ninja marker on you, and we go. All right. Escalation die one. Uh, the the, the s sounds of the Imperial Anthem are still kind of fading as they uh, uh, echo out through here, and the ghouls are kind of mad and rushing towards you. Uh, Irindel on 20. My last smite of this combat on the Screamer again. Okay. And I have the Escalation die. Do we have anything else we're adding right yes. now? Yes. Plus, plus one from the soul. Okay. Right. Oh, crit. Oh, 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 come oh, on. So 40 points of damage. It drops this thing. You br what is it? What does it look like when you when you when you kill this? Uh, basically, I'm smiting it. So literally, I I cleave clear through the uh, body of this undead monstrosity, and it splits down the middle. Smits mm -hmm. crashes back and drops to the ground. Um, one question. Yes. Uh, I know I have the sharpening belt. Mm -hmm. Now, a natural crit still would knock it out for the rest of the battle. Correct? Yes, it would. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yep. Uh, winter on 16. Chris is assessing his options. Yes. Javelin of Faith at the ghoul. And this is going to, if this I pull this off, this is going to be one of the icicles hanging from the top of the building is going to fall and skewer it. Okay. Uh, 18, that's against PD, right? Yes. That will hit. I think it's PD. Yeah, I yeah. guess it doesn't matter. Uh, and plus three for the damage. I'm rolling a, rolling a lot of ones in my damage. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, this thing, the, the, the ice is climbing over the, the, the rubble, gives way, and it falls and jams itself on a, a, a section of sharp uh, broken icicles there and, and gives a cry out. Um, uh, Shakan. 
Okay, well, I'm engaged, so that means I'm going to whip out my scimitar and see what kind of battle cry I get. So I attack the newly risen ghoul. All right. But I only get a 10, unfortunately, so it takes two points of damage. Okay. Um, actually, I you can do your reroll. Uh, isn't it a four? Ow, you're right. Sorry. That's right. Ah. Four. Too yeah. early yet. So, yep, no, just missed it. Okay. That's, that's all right. Too bad. Uh, and your song? Oh, yes. Uh, let me see if I sustain my song. Song of heroes. Reach out. No. Oh. So, uh, Irindel, you are plus two for your next attack roll this battle right the mooks uh, so I'm going to say that Greyhelm will will tie up this newly risen over here put two oh sure. roll uh, a d6 for yeah me. roll a d6 let's see if he does anything besides lock it up oh yeah <laughs> uh, we will we'll take out that that token off the board there. So it is gone. He he keeps keeps the 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 bad guys from moving further on. Uh, uh, we'll go to the ghoul in a second. Uh, so let's do two newly risen on you, Irindel. Okay, I'm at twenty six right now with the halo. Okay, uh, so the first one, this is. That is that. Oh, so close. <laughs> so close. Um, and then the other one. No. So they both uh, uh, scrape at you with great blackened fingernails and miss. Uh, Shikan, on you. Mm -hmm. 15. I think a 25 will hit. That does hit, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, it does three points of damage to you. Uh, and does kind of uh, open you up a little bit to its further attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And am I vulnerable now, am I? Yes. Uh, and then Tallfoot. I, a token on there. I will pop out and do a... Uh, can I pop out down here? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And this is the ghoul that was messed up, right? Already or hurt, yep. Hurt? Yeah, I'm going to pop out and attack this ghoul. Okay. With a tumbling strike. All right, need to hit an 18. Ace, the escalation die is a, a 1. A 1. Attack, 12, hit, no, 20. All right, I'm going to use my lethal and reroll that. Okay. Try that again. Wait, wait. Yeah, okay, 12, yeah. Okay. There we go. So that will hit. And how much damage Crash is damage. <laughs> the damage is a little weak. Uh, but I also get my sneak attack in there. Oh, go ahead and do that. Mm. Uh, and then double it. So 10? No. Uh, 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 so I did 7 plus 5, 12 times 2, 24. So 24 and 10, 10, so 34. It is barely holding together after that strike, sir. All right, and then I'm going to attempt to, because I don't want to have all these guys attack me, especially this other ghoul. I'm going to disengage. Uh, I think disengage is a move. I think you've already moved this No, round. my tumbling strike specifically oh, allows right. me to disengage after at a plus five. Oh, that's right. Bravo. Yes, uh, I am been reading the rules. Ah, mm -hmm. so yeah, you just roll a six or better and you can get out of there. Oh, but and I get to move after the disengage. Yeah, and you get a bonus on your disengage from the boots. Yes. So, so five or better. Piece of cake. So you will uh, we'll get to move, sir. All right. I am going to move. Pachin! Over by Chacon for now. Okay. 
and help a little bit. Hope. Okay. Put you over there. Um, the ghouls. Uh, this ghoul here that was injured kind of gets stabbed to the back. It is going to try and, and hit Irindel. This one will kind of follow through to try and get you, Tallfoot. Uh, and uh, so let's start with the one on uh, uh, Irindel. Uh, does not hit. And the one on you, what's your AC there, Tallfoot? 17. That will hit. Um, so you and, are... And I'd like to use the Tiefling Curse on the one that rolled a three. Oh, okay. Uh, so this ghoul is... Actually, I will say then he will fall and his last two hit points as he goes to strike uh, trips on the ice and goes through him and he will drop. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds great to me. Uh, so this hits. Uh, so And that's not an even hit. Uh, so you're going to take eight points, uh, Tallfoot. Okay. Uh Escalation dies at two, and you have uh, done serious damage to the board. Start with Irindel. All right. A normal melee strike at the newly risen on the left. Okay. The two. So it's going to be... You hit 17. Plus two okay. because of the Song of Heroes still. But, so. so that's uh, 10 total points, right? Yeah, 10 damage. Okay. So that will take out one of them. Another point here. Smash into it. It's it's uh, uh, it's kind of truly pathetic. Just barely put together. It just takes a swack. You cut it down. It drops to the ground. Uh, winner on 16. Uh, Javelin of Faith at the remaining Nulling Risen. I think that's the only one I can see, right? Right. Okay. So I'll do it on that one. Okay. And hopefully Valis smile on me. No. So that will miss. Uh, is there any miss that damage miss. on that? Um, I don't. Oh, I'll have to hold on. I don't think there is. Okay. That's. Uh, yes, there is damage equal to your level, so two points. Two points. Okay. So, does that uh, Shikan? Okay. Um, can't do that. Da -da -da -da. Oh well, I'm engaged, so I'm yep. pretty much just need to roll my scimitar attack. Got an 11. That's again a miss. Yep. So merely two points of damage. Uh, and no other effect. Okay. Uh, so so you will... I'm holding my own, but that's about it. I'm vulnerable at the moment yes. to attacks from the ghoul. All right. So two newly risen on Irindel. Uh, let me get my little die roller back up here. Um, come on. Come on, ghouls. You can do it. No, not that one. And not that one. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can hit Shikan. Uh, uh, that will hit, so you will take uh, three points of damage. Sure. And it's not a crit. Not a crit. Uh, Tallfoot. All right, I will. Um, I'm going to do a disengaging. Uh, or I should say, a uh, evasive strike against the ghoul that's on Shakan, so I can get my sneak attack damage in there, too. Uh, the newly risen, then? Yeah, the newly risen, yeah. Okay. Add two um, for the escalation. Okay, so that will just do miss damage, then. Damn. All right. So six it's taken. Now, this mook is, is going to last through the whole fight. <laughs> Just for the comedy value? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the ghoul will strike at you, Tallfoot. Uh, and he is that. Uh, does a 16 hit you? No. No, and uh, doesn't do anything. No, uh, uh, no miss damage from it. Uh, wow, that's all my guys. Look at you guys. Uh, Escalation die is 3. Uh, Arendelle. Strike again. Okay. So that will hit. And that's eight points of damage, right? Yes. So you will, uh, uh drop, uh, 
this newly risen that's right in front of you and the uh, blade will kind of turn and carry over on and cut into the other one a little bit as well. Winter on 16. Uh, Winter will step forward to get a better view of the last newly risen that she can see and use her javelin of faith. All right. Valis, smile on us. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Luck has turned against you. Yes. <sighs> it's that's that circle of life that, thing. It's that crit. <laughs> it's a payback for that. For the three crits? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shakan. Okay. Uh, still engaged with this ghoul. Whittling it a bit. I'd really like to get a hit in. So I'm okay. just going to try and hit him. I'll just be... No. And go. That will hit. Hurrah! So uh, this uh, other ghoul is coming around to try and get an angle on it, and he'll kind of pop a wound. Plus, yeah. And you will will swing, and you will cut them both down, Shikan. Looks pretty good at the end. I got an 11 plus, uh, which means I can... uh, to pull it together for someone if anyone needs a recovery. But I think I'm the only one who, who's actually been hurt at the moment. I think so. Uh, me too. Hmm? I've been hit. I took oh, eight. Well, one nearby ally can heal using a recovery if you want to. But I, you know, if it's only eight, I wouldn't worry too much at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much does recovery recover? Uh, what do you switch uh, your recovery dice? D8. Uh, so, so 2D8. 2D8. Plus your con. Getting 2D8 plus con. Oh, yeah, I guess... Yeah, you know, well, what the hell, I'll take it. Absolutely, okay. use up that recovery. Because yeah. it's free, you you can get it for nothing, you don't have to worry, it means you've still got a free one left. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and uh, Tallfoot, you go next before this ghoul that's on you. Yeah, well, I will try that, get the hell out of the way from the ghoul thing again. Okay. So I'll attack the ghoul with my uh, disengage, my evasion strike. Absolutely. Oh, oh, that, oh didn't no, work. that was the wrong thing. Okay, that was the feet, <laughs> not the actual thing. Mm-hmm. No, I am on a bad roll. You are. I'm liking Two this. Points of damage for uh, miss, though. I wish I had more bad guys on the table. Take advantage of this. The ghoul is going to swing at you, uh, William, uh, and that will hit. Uh, and uh, not even hit, uh, so you'll take another eight points. Uh, okay. Uh, Irondel, Escalation Die is four, which means Winter's foreshadowing can come into play. Right, I move to flank the ghoul. Okay. And an attack. A good hit, but uh, kind of weak on the damage there. Uh, but uh, we'll cut into it, uh, kind of drawing its attention. Winter. Um, Winter's going to cautiously move forward so that she can see the action. She hears the fighting. So from here, can I see you? Yeah. Okay. Broken um, rubble wall. Right, that's what I figured. So, uh, and this is the only one standing still. It is the only one standing. Oh, okay, then javelin of faith. Let's see. Got to be an Isaac. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, a little bit of miss damage as it 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 slams against the wall there, but it is still up. Yeah, I, I'm picturing that this is like in these movies when the people are trying to start the car in the horror movies and it doesn't quite start. Yes. <laughs> Shikan, you just uh, cleared out two, two, two of these ghouls with one strike. Yep. Indeed. I'm now no longer engaged. I'm just going to chaos bolt the ghoul. Okay. I snap my fingers at him and point at him in a really cool way. And pow. <laughs> uh, well, definitely hit. <laughs> so that's cold damage because I only roll that once. Okay. Uh, so he takes uh, five points on there. Uh, yep. Again, uh, hits, it kind of freezes a section. It kind of crackles as he moves there. Uh, this thing is falling apart. It does look like it is not quite staggered yet. Isn't that an even attack roll? 
you can only work with melee attack uh -oh. for battle cries. You uh -oh. actually have to hit people. Uh -oh. uh, and uh, t uh, William. What's the escalation dice now? Four? Four. Four. Oh, so we get the plus two re-roll? Uh, well, uh, if, if you miss, you can re-roll. Mm -hmm. yep. oh, no, no, I'm not saying for me it's not my choice. I was just reminding. Right. Sorry. That's correct. <laughs> yes. yes. Making sure I was like, yay, we can actually kill this thing. Okay. Uh, we'll try this for the eight millionth time. Okay. Uh, and it is engaged with Arendelle, so you get your bonus from that. Yeah. No. Wow. This So we do we do, we do a flashback? Do we want to do a flashback and you get a reroll? So the flashback I was saying when you're in this building and you're going to be fighting this thing, <laughs> I'm going to continually miss. <laughs> what, you, you're go faint right not left and it'll work. Okay. Reroll with a plus 2. Yay! Ah, oh, crit. Oh, Is that a crit? Nicer. Yes. Uh so even without the sneak attack stuff, that will kill it. As as you recall Winter's advice and uh, is that, that moment where you kind of switch and drive uh, your blade into this thing and it will uh, collapse to the ground. Thank you for the advice. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Nice one. Um, and the, uh, uh, the, the group will gather themselves together. Uh, look down, see that hole down below, and uh, I think that's where we're going to take up next time, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. That's great. Um, let's have you all do your icon rolls, though, before we uh, uh, leave today. Um, okay. Let me start with... Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, thanks, Irondell. <laughs> Five, mm -hmm. six... Five, so wow uh, we're gonna be busy is that what i'm hearing yes okay and then uh who's next uh okay i already have a, a six with the emperor six from the emperor. a little earlier yep because of the balladeer okay and now i'm gonna do the other th do them do all three again right so we've got another emperor not elf queen. Ooh. Six with the elf queen. Wow, this is going to be a crazy session. Three with the lich king. Okay. All right. And then, uh, Dusty? Uh, well, we're where we want to be, so I'll roll my two with the Prince of Shadows. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's see if we get all the icons involved okay. in this next session. And then, should I roll the Emperor with well, my negative? Well, uh, yeah. You will, and you roll the second one for. Oh, you rolled two oh, yeah. d six. Oh, actually, that doesn't isn't. Uh, so, you don't get the <laughs> Prince could, of Shadows, could. but you do get the Emperor. No, that was the second Prince of Shadows. I have two dice. Uh, yeah, well, no, it, it, roll. it rolls two dice for you. You have to click out, roll over it to see what they are. It adds them together. Unfortunately, it's a four and a two. Oh, oh, it was a four and a two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the Emperor, but it, the Emperor's. Uh, you got a six on that. Yeah, but it should be a negative. Yeah, but uh, it's still uh, it's conflicted is what you have. Oh, no, you have a negative. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that will come back to bite you. To haunt me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the last one is uh, Winter. So nothing nothing good, nothing terrible, but uh, and we'll roll for, for John next time. You have two cursed dice with the Lich King, by the way. Oh, you should yes. make a note of that. Let's, uh, I'll write that here. Two curse dice. Lich King, which is appropriate since you're fighting some of his minions potentially next time. Uh, everyone may level themselves up to level three. Ooh. Uh, you, you have not had a full rest, but I will let you go ahead and, and move yourselves up to, to level three. So make note of where your recoveries are and all of that stuff. Now, that, that recovery that I used was free, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, no. Well, no. It, it's one of your... It counts as your I've used a recovery. Oh, it does. Okay. It, 
doesn't count as the as the rally that you always get in a battle. Right. So if, if it had been a big battle, you could have taken a, another rec a recovery without having to worry about. Okay. okay. So basically, I lower my current recovery, but yep, I want, it just doesn't count for the one I can use. In a that's battle. right. Correct. Yes. So it's it's like you get to roll it now without having to worry about the fact that you have already rallied in the battle or something because mm -hmm. you're getting it from me rather than from yeah. yourself. Sounds good. That makes sense. Uh, any questions? Anything I should uh, uh, answer before we we wrap up here? Oh, great session. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so we're playing again, don't forget, uh, on, I believe it's the second. Uh, yes. So we're not playing next week uh, uh, since I have Christmas obligations, but we will play again on the second. Um, and I will type up a summary of this and post it on the board. Uh, any feedback or questions or anything, go ahead and send those on to me, and I'm going to turn off the recording. All right. Well, everybody have a good Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas, everyone. Everyone enjoy Merry your Christmas. Christmas. Have a lovely time.